If you could fall, I will catch you. I will be waiting. Time after time. Time after time. Time after time. I must have logged into the account. I did on accident. the day we celebrate mothers giving birth. No? Labor Day? No. 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 Uh, let's see. I think we're good to go. I'm going to mute my things here. Yeah, I look I just really like orange on the stream. You look pink on my giant start rolling. I'm going to go ahead and hit the button. The button. The button. I am rolling. Check one, two. Okay. I'm rolling. Okay. Rolling <clears throat> as well. I am also rolling on the Adobe auditions. Everybody's rolling? Yep. We're going to do a sync clap. We'll do one, two, three clap. Okay. One, two, three. Awesome. All right. Got my notes. Tesla rockets, just me and you today. 
Yeah. In the chat. Everybody's barbecuing. <laughs> barbecue. All right. It's next on my list is to set up my barbecue. Oh, man. I'm, I'm, I'm currently working on my laundry room. Next is the barbecue. A grilled sandwich. I'm excited to show that off once I get it done. Yes. The what? Hello, the laundry wake up, room? GFX. I'll have to show you what we did. Clap. Yes, that's our clap sync. We we are recording for the audio podcast. So we all sync up our recordings. All right. I think we're good to go. And uh, without further ado, let's get this party started. So we'll have to take a poll. Does does Matt look orange or does he look pink? It's like the See, dress. Is it gold or black? Or whatever it is, gold or blue. Let me split the difference. Because in, in every single thing that I have, it, it looks completely different. Like YouTube, yeah. my Sparkle Cam, and Skype, they all look different. I'm looking on my giant monitor yeah, here. They're fine. Uh, yeah. yeah, but if that's your TV, your TV's probably not color calibrated. I oh, trust yeah. these LG monitors yeah. a bit more than Don't I do. You know, TCL like is like the highest end of the highest end. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's up, Rocket Force? What's going on? Alright, let's do this. Hey, Here we go. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, all right. All right. What's up and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. Joining us today is our good friend, Luis Miranda. Hey. <laughs> and MoGraph is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects, plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor, or working for the man. You can email us, info at MoGraph.com, and let us know what you think about the show. Questions, comments, concerns, grievances, queries, topic ideas, artist suggestions. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, MoGraph.com. Send us stuff. There's always a way to contact us. Send us what you want to hear about. You're the producer. So yeah, anyway, yeah. So this week, Luis is here. We got uh, we got some some cool stuff coming up this week. You know, yeah, I don't I don't have exciting. a lot of links. It's gonna be a fun week. The reason I don't have a lot no, of week links Dave's is links. I think people are are waiting for IBC. I think that's what's going on here. It's just mm. everybody's waiting to post anything until IBC. Now we we posted our little IBC thingy this morning, so that's yeah. going. And uh, I'm I'm all I'm all set here in the new studio. Did a little recording for that. Yeah, you got everything promo. set up, right? Yeah, everything's all moved in. Everything's moved in. I've cut and bruised and hurt myself <laughs> many times doing many household chores. Even shocked myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I I you know I've done electrical work for years, and I I've prided prided, pri and I pride right. myself Pr in having. Prouded not shocked myself before but yeah. um you know growing up my dad told me that even though you turn off a breaker you should just assume that every wire you touch is hot mm -hmm. you know and it's, it's a good way to do it you know you don't touch two wires at the same time don't ground yourself now i went around we figured out all the breakers and i was installing a dimmer switch and it's one of those two plate mm -hmm. switches so you have two switches right. in there you know so I was putting the dimmer Wait, so on you one didn't, side. Did you turn the power off to your yes to that area first? The, okay. the power was wow, off, and got shocked. we had found the breakers that were going to the entire kitchen. However, mm -hmm. however, the mm -hmm. switch that is on the left side next to that switch in the same two switch thing mm -hmm. was the garbage mm -hmm. disposal, which had been put on a separate breaker. So gotcha. that I makes was, sense. yeah, I was I was pulling out the ground wire because I needed to attach it to this new switch and it was all way back in the box and I'm pulling it out and I just put my hand on the thing to kind of like, you know, brace myself and yeah. my index finger on my left hand hit the hot on the garbage disposal and I started feeling this weird tingle sensation. And it kind I know of the tingle me. sensation, yeah. Oh man, and I haven't, I haven't shocked myself since I was uh, like four, three or four years old, because I yeah. put I put a staple in a plug when I was a kid because I thought, well, it looks I, it looks like it, you know, it looks right. like the thing, it, it fits, right? I once, uh, you know how uh, with Christmas lights they've got a plug and then a plug on the backside as well. Yeah. 
uh, when I was younger, I wanted to see how many I could fit in there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so I got like five or six deep, and then all of a sudden I felt that tingle. How you did know? it do that, though? Were you just... Yeah, I was working fine. I mean, you were touching the plastic, right? Yeah. It oh, no. I, I, it, was, it was like I was shoving the thing in there. And so my, you know, my thumb kind of went in both holes uh, or whatever. Yeah, my fat you. thumb. Yeah, oh. it wasn't as bad as I thought. You know, yeah. for my, my back problems and stuff, I have a TENS unit. And mm -hmm. it just felt like a really strong TENS unit. I did get a yeah. little burn spot on my finger, but it's already gone. So, you know, <laughs> NBD, you know, just went through my heart. <clears throat> um, <laughs> let's right. see. That's That's it for that. I do... It's gonna be a short. It's gonna be how's, a short day for me. How's what? uh unpacking the rest of your house? It's not bad. You it actually it, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's still there's always gonna be stuff to do. You know, I found these really cool little things for the bedside tables. Right. So we got this thing. Yeah. It's a bed and it has like side tables and everything built in. It feels kind of like a hotel bed. It's really really nice. And on the side, it had these little dinky holes for putting like. A wire through for a lamp or something and I found these really mm -hmm. cool things on Amazon uh, the only thing is you have to drill the hole bigger I had to get one of those three inch giant drill bits you know yeah. to do a three inch hole but it's really yeah. cool it's only like 35 bucks and it looks like a cup you know or a cup holder it goes down in the hole and uh -huh. it has a cover on it the cover is a wireless charger for your phone Right. Oh, that's cool. But you can slide the cover open, and then there's two outlets, two USBs, and then the wireless still works when it's open. That's so cool. it just really like makes everything look nice and flush. And just been doing yeah, stuff like that, nice. ceiling yeah. fans, and you know, hooked up the I mean, pool tables in there, hooked up a TV with the little Raspberry Pi Nintendo nice. system on it, and fun that's stuff cool. like that. You know, I, I've everywhere. been working on my laundry room. I like 3D modeled my laundry room to see if I could, you know. <laughs> make it the way I wanted it. Yeah. Kind of like you did with your office. Mm -hmm. And so I finally get, I finally uh, started working on it. And I, I realized I was going through and saving pictures to my, my phone, like progress pictures. Cause I've been taking them as I've been going. Mm -hmm. And I realized I started this in July, like the beginning of July and I'm still working oh, on it. Yeah. Well, it's because like, you know, I needed a, a nail gun and then I borrow a nail gun from my dad and it only shoots like six nails before it breaks. And so then I got to <laughs> order a nail gun and stuff like that, which Amazon had a pretty good deal on it. So I went ahead and bought that. And then uh, what else? I don't know. It's just like little things here and there, you know. So I'm finally at the point where I got everything. Am I on my webcam, Mike? I'll check. Sorry. Um, so I finally got to the point where I'm. Uh, yeah, I am. Sorry. You're not recording there, on your webcam, much, Mike. There, I'm that's, not recording. That's better. Okay, good. Um, I finally got to the point where. Like I got everything done and everything set. And I was like, all right, cool. Now it's time to paint. And I start painting it and I realize I'm a really terrible painter and everything just looks like blotchy and doesn't look clean and smooth mm. and stuff. And I'm like, Ugh. so I got really, you know, depressed about that. So now I got, I got a guy. Like, if you need sick. a guy, I got a guy. Yeah, I know. I should have just hired someone because I don't know what I'm doing or just gotten a, a, like a like a spray gun, you know? Cause now that I got, I bought a compressor and a nail gun and stuff like that. And like, I sh should have just bought a, a paint gun. Rollers should I don't be know. fine. Yeah. I'm not using rollers cause it's a really tight area. It's like little uh, shelving and stuff that I built. Little mini so I'm having to use a paintbrush and it's just looking, it's looking stupid. I should send you a photo of what we did in our laundry room. Came out kind of nice. Yeah. 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 Um, so let's see anything else, anything else to cover? Uh, Let's see. Anything so, 3D related? <laughs> IBC uh, 3D is 3D related? What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> no, uh, I am going to run a half marathon this afternoon, so I'm, I'm kind of trying to mentally prep here. You know, yeah. all I can think about is the okay. fact that I'm going to do that. Um, so uh, we were going to mention, we, we can't talk too much in detail about it, but we have been uh, working on uh a big project this year that's yeah. what we've been doing for most of the year which is we have been yeah. working on the graphics for madden and yeah, we, uh <laughs> we, so. we can't say which things or anything like yeah. that but or what um, 
Mm-hmm. If uh, if you so happen to uh, you know pick up Madden 2021, uh, uh, make sure and look closely. You could probably see some of our work, which is yeah. exciting. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, it gets good reviews. I don't know. Is it getting good reviews? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> well, dang it. Well, that's not fun. not our work. Our work is is great. You know, but uh, yeah. <laughs> well. So. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're enjoying it. You know, it was fun to work on a project like that. It's, you know, a video game. It's different. Yeah, it is. You're you know, and EA, video, EA, you know? EA was a great, uh, like, you know, for great as much client. crap as the gaming community gives them, you know, about like, you know, whatever, like they were a really great client to work for. They were great. They really were. With. Yeah. Like absolutely. It, was, it was one of the easiest, one of the easiest, you know, jobs we've done in a while. You know, mm-hmm. great client. Yeah. So. And so, um, let's see. Yeah. So we got that. We got an article that came out this last week that yeah. you can check out. It's uh, an article on uh, a company that does different types of work, but the one that, they, that we kind of feature in there is some work they did for Black Mirror. So you can check that oh, out. Oh, that's cool. MoGraph.com slash news. Also, this week, tomorrow, actually, there will be another article coming out about the Westworld opening titles. Uh, so that'll be cool. You can check that out. IBC is this week. So yep. make sure you stay tuned for all sorts of uh, streams, announcements, things like that coming up from different people. I know Maxon is going to be streaming this whole week and uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to be there behind the scenes doing the streaming things there it's going to be four days of streaming so and that's and it's at the normal time right it is at the normal time it's going to be 8 30 pacific specifically yeah. pacific time yeah. yes. Ding. <laughs> and then <laughs> so make sure you check that out that'll be fun there's going to be so many people lined up for those four days and there's just such so many great presentations and such great work they do a really great job of, of yeah. picking out awesome talent. Uh, next week, we are going to kind of do an IBC wrap-up on the show with EJ. EJ will be here. Yay! I haven't talked to him in a while. And you're going to be seeing Your EJ and pants. in yeah. person. Yeah, I'm going to Denver next weekend. Yeah. It's going to be fun. That'll be Helping cool. my brother move, you know, move back to Dallas. And Denver is a stop. We were going to go to southern Utah and visit some family. But then I was like, eh. It's election season. I don't. I don't need to see that. <laughs> so you can go you know, hang out decided. with them. Uh, in, you should maybe find a way to introduce EJ to Halo. Finally, you know. Yeah. No, I don't think yeah. so. I think. I think getting EJ to play Halo would be like getting EJ to switch switch, switch to a to PC. PC. I mean, it's possible. Yeah. You know? It's not gonna happen. He used to play Goldeneye. So you, yeah. You should. Well, you should at least try and introduce him to Fall Guys, but I guess he can't play that unless he oh, has a PC. No, he can't. Yeah, I know. It's mm-hmm. stupid. Mm-hmm. Fall Guys is pretty good. I like it. Yeah, we played with Arya yesterday. That was fun. And so uh, the last thing on the list is is Winbush has a tutorial out. Just what up, what up? This morning, what up, what up? It's it's on MoGraph.com slash tutorials. You can check it out there. And this is basically a teaser. <laughs> it's a full tutorial, but it's a teaser for his course. It's one of the chapters, basically. And mm-hmm. it's about taking FBX and Mixamo data from Cinema 4D and doing bakes and bringing that into Unreal Engine. Yeah. So uh, you can check that Just out up. there. Just dropped. And actually... I've got a little uh, promo here that we could play. I've got to uh, open it up here full screen. Let's see if I can play uh, a video correctly that on the first try for once. How about that? You know. Do it, that, Dave. That would be great. That I would believe be in you. Yeah. You think I can do it? I think you can. Yeah. Let's see. Full screen. Full screen. See, now the stupid thing is being stupid. All right. See, I always have problems with this. I need to find a better playback system. All right. Full screen. Play. Now we're cooking with grease. All right. You ready? 
Let's do Let's it. Let's watch this thing. Here we go. What up, what up? What up, what up, indeed. Here we go. <laughs> My name's Joel, Deb Mouse. I've been following Jonathan Winbush for quite some time. Little plug for my friend Winbush. Hey, this is Dave from MoGraph.com inviting you to check out a new free Cinema 4D Unreal tutorial from Jonathan Winbush. He's taking the Unreal world by storm and you can't help but say, what up, what up? What up, what up, Winbush here. What up, what up, Winbush here. And today I'm excited to give you a teaser of my course created in Unreal exclusively on MoGraph.com. In this full sample lesson from his upcoming course, Winbush will show you how to bring Bring FBX animations and Mixamo data from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine. Cinema 4D and Epic, John Winbush. If you like that lesson, sign up for notifications on when his course becomes available and head over to Winbush's YouTube page for more Unreal goodness. Definitely check out Jonathan Winbush on YouTube. Cinema 4D and Unreal. Let's go! Make sure you go to MoGraph.com. I'll check you there. Take care. <laughs> Winbush. There That's it funny. is. Make sure you check that out if you're getting into Unreal Engine. I know a mm -hmm. lot of people getting into Unreal Engine from Cinema 4D mm -hmm. are going to have questions and, and want to be able to do stuff like that. So, Very excited about this course. Yeah. It's getting so close to being released. And, and I think you see, he only had two more videos left to mm -hmm. record. And I just yeah. got them in the Dropbox link this morning. <clears throat> oh, I, yeah? I think he was up late doing it. And I just got a text mm -hmm. from him. And I think because of the holiday, he did all that late and he slept in. So uh -huh. <laughs> he's he just texted me. He is like, he's like, man, I just woke up this morning to all these messages and stuff. And I'm like, what is going on right now? That's funny. So I guess, um, and plus it's earlier there, you know, he's he's on that L.A. time like you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you do. Yeah. So anyway, let's get into some Rapcock. What's your flavor? What's your flavor? And we got a little hardware. To I talk need a about. little push button for these things, you know, on my stream deck. Like, oh, play yeah. audio. Yeah. What's your flavor? The one thing I, I do want to add to this is if you are on the Octane Facebook group, Jules just posted some really amazing. Oh, so good. Brigade clips. <clears throat> There's, um. I, I cannot wait. It's. Oh, man. Ugh. And it's all it, running it's on like, a 1080 it, Ti, just one. I know, I know. <laughs> how? How is that even possible? Uh, yeah, man. we were talking about earlier how ridiculous it, ridiculous it's going to be that like the 3090s and the 3080s were just announced, you know. And Dave and I we're gonna we're gonna load up on 3080s. We're gonna get four we each. Assuming yeah. we can actually we're gonna, get those. Assuming we can, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna but. have to have my brother like on another yeah. computer at midnight with me, you know, and you'll get Julie and we'll all just be like, yeah, there you go. Refresh, 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 yeah. trying to get them. But the, uh, yeah, it's like, we're going to be buying eight thirty eighties, you know, to jam pack our computers full of them. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, brigades going to come out and it's like, Oh, this will run on a 1080 TI. Right, you don't need all this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Still your client projects with brigade. There are some client projects we could probably do with just brigade, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. NV Link doesn't work on 3080s. Is that no, true? No, I, I don't think so. I didn't see any, I didn't even see a, a little thing on the side for it. But I don't know if you hmm. really need it, really. Yeah. Do you? Do you? What's I mean, the 3080s? Is it 10 gig? Yeah. I believe it's 10, 10 gig. gig. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, everyone everyone talks a lot about like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not working on big enough projects or something. You're just but, efficient. Like, I've never I've never I've never run out of VRAM. You're just efficient ever, with your polys. You know. Like maybe like two or three times I've ever ran out of VRAM. I am efficient. I try and be as efficient as possible, you know. Or you're just do using, what you call it? What's the what? The, the, out of core. Out of core. Yeah, maybe. I don't think yeah. I am. I might be. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think I hit the limit when I was working on like a project with like a huge road and cities and buildings and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just just massive. I mean, it was three miles of road that I had built on something. Yeah, you know, yeah, but, yeah. I remember that. But that was years yeah. ago. That was like with 980 Ti. No, that was you know that wasn't. Was it 28? Yeah, it was 2080. Yeah, it was 2080. Right, and right. the NV Link, I guess it it helped. But yeah, I mean, I don't usually see the little thing turn blue and say that I'm using the NV Link. And I've, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, it's it's 
10 gig and uh, Chad Ashley actually posted a good uh, chart this morning. I'll see if I can find it and bring it up. And it just had some comparisons and things like that. <laughs> it's funny. This is Ravcock, but we're talking about graphics cards and stuff. Well, I always kind of put the hardware stuff in here because that's kind of where yeah. it lies, you know. Um, just to, yeah. to wrap up the Jules thing, he he was, you know, the the classic scene of yeah of the car the, 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 the truck, big truck the Mack going truck down or, the the what is it yeah. called a lorry no know. that's a that's a tax no yeah a lorry the eighteen wheeler it's a lorry it's a lorry I don't know. um so he said like originally it was sixty seconds a frame for that and now it's 60 yeah. frames a second which is just insane freaking fantastic so here's the the kind of spec chart that chad ashley posted this morning and he says looks like the 3080 is around 38 percent faster than the 2080 ti i'm gonna wait so and see how it pans out now i swore that they said in the presentation that the 3070 <clears throat> was twice as fast as the 2080 ti i swore he said that maybe did he did he not i like that he, he wore his leather jacket even though he was in the kitchen for the presentation <laughs> he always yeah. wore a leather jacket and, um, you know so that you know that uh that meme the 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 twitter that said boys just want one thing and it's freaking disgusting yeah. you know i yeah. saw one with that and then it had the dude holding a 3090 <laughs> yeah it's like it's funny Luis, what are you gonna are you gonna buy are you gonna wait what's your what's your stance on these yeah well i've been waiting since uh because i i'm currently running on two 1080 ti's um, there you go. So, yeah, you're ready for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've been, I, I saw that the 2080s, I saw the RTX, and I was like, that sounds really cool. Um, but then the Super came out, and I was like, ah, oh, well, I'm pretty sure it's going to release like the new versions yeah. here soon. So decided to just wait. I just updated everything else except the graphics cards. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. I'm yeah, so did we. We just, um, you know, we just, we, we decided that we're just going to upgrade our systems as much as possible. You know, we've been running on these eight core thread rippers for a while mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, we're going to make the jump. We're going to, we, we went and bought some 32 core thread rippers. So nice. really excited about up? that. Those haven't even shipped. Well, They're like on back yeah, I know. I was looking at, I, it's back ordered right now, mm. but I, I like B and H is pretty good from what I've read. They're pretty good about letting people know, that the amount of days that it's back ordered and i think ours was mm. back ordered like five to seven days so we'll probably get it next week i would assume so nice. barring nice. any holidays what's up winbush what up what up what up what up <laughs> winbush is here Sorry. he's awake now yeah he was enjoying the <laughs> he was enjoying the holiday and got got interrupted yep. by all the the social medias so let's see. Let's look at these. So average. See if you look at the bottom of this chart. The the average increase is one hundred and forty one percent. What's what's the? I don't understand. What's the two numbers for one forty one and one sixty eight? No is idea. that thirty eighty or is that thirty? No. That's a. I don't know. Uh, versus a twenty eighty Ti versus a twenty eighty. No, RTX. there was yeah. also a, a leak as well of somebody spec you know because there's always the different variations that the different companies bring right. out and whatnot and there was some sort of leak that mentioned a 3080 ti but generally those things don't come out for so long it's just like i yeah. don't want to wait any longer i know yeah we've been we've been holding off on upgrading our systems entirely because we knew a new 30 or we, we assumed a 30 series was coming out you know I've been talking about upgrading us to the 2070 Supers for a while, but Dave's like, nah, 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 let's just wait. Let's just wait. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's gonna like, happen. all right. And yeah. it did. Yeah. And Don't they, they always they... release on Saturdays? I mean, sorry, on in September? Yeah, they do. That's they... why we assumed that they were coming out, you know, yeah. that they were going to be announced soon. Because normally at, at SIGGRAPH, they announce the, uh, the big uh, Quattro cards or whatever they are, you know, and then around gdc or a little bit after or whatever that's when they start announcing the big you know the new series that's the thing you wait so long <clears throat> to get the to get the announcement and then you wait for it to come yeah. out and then you're like okay well now that that's out now how long do we have to wait for the ti version 
Right. You know, it's right. like or, you know, if you can't even pick them up, how long do you have to wait before you can even get them in the stores? Yeah. You know. Yeah. It sucks. Well, I mean, I'm one of my my secondary machines still rocking 3980 Ti's. And it's still slow. I don't even use it half the time, mm-hmm. you know. It's like whatever. You well, know, I'm ready I'm ready to have some some real power. My my question is are they going to stack well? I mean, I I know that the fans are kind of well. staggered, right? Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, I think they'll be fine. You know, these the thirty eighties. I mean, I don't know. I've always just stacked my stuff. It's fine. Mm-hmm. It'll get a little hot sometimes, but you just throttle the uh, just throttle the performance. Luis, you have whatever. Uh, yeah, I just have like the uh, what is it? The Founders Edition. So it has yeah. like that's yeah that it's got the fans on the top, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, Winbush says he always stacks too. Yeah, and if Winbush and... says that's right. Then it must be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, they had some other stuff in the announcements too. Of course, they always go into AI and they go into uh, yeah. what else? They go into they, they showed some real time stuff. That marble thing was really cool. But I did notice yeah, they but... changed the marble thing from having like glass marbles to having mirrored glossy marbles. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I I think they made that decision to help it go a little bit faster. I I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, glass. You know, show me show me some real time caustics. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I, then I will be impressed. And the, it's gonna be a while. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Right. Well, maybe the maybe the thirty ninety will be able to do it. Gosh, that thirty ninety is a freaking beast. Yeah, it's a chonky boy. <laughs> it is a chonky boy. <laughs> That thing is like, he took it out of the oven in the presentation in his kitchen. He pulled yeah. it out of the oven to show it off. It's freaking huge, and it's three slots. <laughs> Have you seen these memes where, like, uh, they find, like, these old, like, AC units or something with three fans on it? It's like, oh, look, I got found the 3090 Ti <laughs> or something. Yeah. It's really funny. And the... <clears throat> Otoy hasn't released the bench scores. I guess they won't let them oh, man. talk They're gonna about bench so scores They're going to be so good. They're going to be so good. I, I, I got a feeling. I got a feeling those Octane bench scores are going to are just going to destroy. Well, the thing is that on that thread that Jules posted, I'm sorry, that a- Chad Ashley posted, Jules said he looked at these numbers and he said, interesting, but the actual Octane bench scores on these cards are going to be even more interesting in my opinion. That's all he yeah. said. And and Chad said, interesting. Can you share any more information? <laughs> and he said, not for a bit longer. Yeah. With the emoji with the zipper on the mouth. Yeah. So like 10 days, 10 days until it, the question is how long until like, are they they're released on the 17th or we can buy them on the 17th? Will mm-hmm. they be in stores on the 17th? I don't know. I, I don't know. We <laughs> just, you just, we just have to follow it. Uh, yeah, the the thing is, the octane bench scores are really going to be what we're looking at, right? However, right, you you can't go by what was the deal with CUDA? Like the CUDA, dude, they're the CUDA is fudging ridiculous. these numbers okay. though. No, they're no, fudging no. the so numbers I, I think they're, somehow. <laughs> they're fudging the numbers. Yeah. Come on, this isn't the the Trump administration. Come uh, on. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> went there. Yeah. yeah um, went there. That's right. Hold on, let me find it. Because I can't remember the exact amount of CUDA cores. It's a, like it's a ridiculous amount. So the 3080. Let's look at my specs. The specs. The amount of CUDA cores is 8704. Now, when I was chatting on the Slack about this, they were saying it's because each CUDA core can now do two processes at once or something like that. So they're like doubling, saying it's double the amount mm-hmm. of CUDA cores or something. You know, but if you look at it, the 2070 Supers that we have, there's only like 2,500 CUDA cores. If you double that, it's still half of the amount of CUDA cores that the 3080 is has. I'm telling you, like, hmm. the Octane bench score on this is going to be huge. It's going to be it's going to be big. Somebody was commenting on that whole CUDA thing. It's like it's like they know people are looking at CUDA core numbers right. now more than certain things mm-hmm. so they're tr- just so they're kind of playing on it a little bit yeah. just to make it look i don't know it's it's like comparing i don't know 
It's like comparing ice <laughs> core temperatures to actual thermal readings when trying oh, to do climate right, change of readings. Course. <laughs> it's like it, it's two different measurements technically, you know? I guess. No? No? Bad I example? Don't I don't know. Mm. Anyway, so we'll see. I don't know. Anything else about the cards? I'm I'm excited about it. GG uh, uh GDDR6 RAM, DRAM, mm -hmm. which is cool. So Hmm. Oh. I really, I really am interested on these octane bench scores. Just the, the yeah. way that the I, way that uh, Jules is alluding to something. Yeah, you know, I really like the way it looks. Like it's a very pretty card, and the way they they've got it with like the um, the thermal fins and stuff like that. It's like a radiator or whatever. I feel like I feel like it's gonna stay cool better. You know. Especially yeah. with them stacked. We didn't talk about price point. No, we didn't. Mm -hmm. Price point's like it's insane. The Founders Edition thirty eighty is only six ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Like that's like a hundred dollars cheaper than the twenty eighties were, you know? Man. Or something like that. Man. And somebody brought up a good point in some meme or something. They're like, that's the price that a good graphics card used to be. Right. It's just these prices just keep going up and up. You're paying the price of a computer for a graphics card. Right. So I right. Like that they're doing that. And I'm surprised that they were able to get this to where it is, even with the COVID mm -hmm. situation. Now, yeah. it'll be another thing to find out how they're going to handle distribution with the COVID situation. If it's going to be one mm -hmm. of those things where people are just like fighting over them and selling them on eBay for twice the price. Right. <laughs> but... The 3090s are running 14.99, which is really good. And then the 3070s, the 3070s are only 500 bucks. That's pretty good. That's real good. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What's up? Uh, I was going to say, um, what would you guys recommend for somebody who, like, would you recommend getting two 3090s or do you think getting two 3080s is we, more economical? We considered getting, like, to one, so right 30, now in our in, in our machines i've got i've got two 2070 supers because the cuda cost you know the the cost per cuda ratio mm -hmm. was the best you know and if you if you're looking at cuda on the 3080 versus the 3090 the 3080 is 700 bucks and it's like 8700 cuda versus the 3090 is twice almost twice the price no it's, it is twice the price right no mm -hmm. it's uh uh 17, 14. Yeah, so it's $1,500. And you only get 2,000 more CUDA or something mm. like that. So for me, the 3080 is is the best deal. You can buy four of them for the price that you would have two 3090s. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, you get the VRAM limitation because, you know, you're looking at 10, uh, 10 gig versus what's the 3090? 30, 30, is it? How much is it? I think it's 24. Jeez, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah, twenty four gig. Is it? Is I don't that know. more for gaming though? Because it, the thirty ninety they were showing off can run sixty frames a second with eight K. First of all, yeah. where are you going to get that eight K monitor to game on? Uh huh. And how much is that going to cost? The thing is, like, you could get eight K. Can you get like a work monitor for your desk that's eight K right now? That isn't. I don't know. Just ridiculous and. Who's doing that right now? And and are the textures in these games even good enough to really notice a difference? Once that once that Unreal Five comes out. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. Unlimited polygons. So yeah, everyone's know. gonna need a thirty ninety by then. I feel yeah. like the thirty ninety is more for like ultra super gamers. Yeah, but... or the people. Yeah, or the. I don't even think it's for the gamers. I I don't think the thirty ninety is for the gamers. I think it's more for us, the creatives who are needing like extra VRAM and stuff like that. Like well, the honestly, VRAM I see. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I had a I had a nine eighty Ti in my gaming machine, you know, and the only reason I took it out is because it was really loud. I replaced it with the twenty seventy super and it's like I don't need anything more than that. You kidding me? Especially with that brigade dough. Right? That brigade. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna that be so good. Dough. At least let's talk about you. Let's talk about you. Yeah. You, you, let's talk about you now, because you've just been so talkative so far. And, I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we we want to know a little bit more about your background and everything. Um, 
you you uh, go to school anywhere? You're in Denver. Did you go to yeah. school? Did you not go to school? How did you get yeah. started? Yeah, I went to, uh, it's called uh, University of Colorado Denver, and it's uh, in downtown Denver. Um, yeah. So it's basically, sense. yeah. <laughs> They have other campuses, so like their main one is in Boulder, and so that's where like the football team and all that stuff is. Uh, but yeah, they have a campus downtown. Um, I was able to get like a scholarship, and I went for film school. So I did that for a bit before uh, getting hired over at Telemundo here in Denver. Nice. So I did nice. that for like almost Do you a year. Speak Spanish? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and so part of it was because I know how to read and write it, so right. I can you know type it out. It's still still difficult because like Spanish has its kind of weird uh, sort of like yeah. grammar rules, and so right. everyone had to fix it anyways. And also, I feel like there's a lot more. There's like, in order to say the same thing in English, you have to say a lot more words in Spanish. Like anytime we've had to had to do someone do a Spanish voiceover for us, mm -hmm. you know, it's like they're reading really fast to yeah. cram it in the same amount that we would say in English. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also you have to change the order of the words sometimes uh, for it to make sense. Uh, uh -huh. so, I, so instead of like the verb coming before the noun, you have to like flip it so that it makes a little bit more sense. Kind of Yoda kind of hard it. to translate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I did that for a bit, and then uh, I got hired over at a competing station. It's uh, their Univision, and okay. they had a uh, contract with the Denver Broncos to do a TV show uh, once a week. Um, re recapping the game and we also like had assignments where we would record uh, features with players uh, sometimes with cheerleaders we'd go to different events and stuff like that uh, so I was kind of like what were you doing what were you doing for them what were you doing for Telemundo and then to Univision oh uh, so Telemundo I was in charge of making all the commercials okay uh, so, so I was the production so were you actually. like shooting as well or was it all 3D yeah it was all it was uh, filming uh, the motion graphics wasn't as important in it mm -hmm. um I, a lot of them were pretty much the same. They were. I made a template for myself, and I would kind of swap out logos. Yeah. Um, nice. But then there were certain assignments that required a lot more, and so I would do try to you know do 3D and stuff. Um, I was using Element back then, nice. um, before I switched over to Cinema. Yeah. And so when I got into Univision, um, it was pretty much the same, like filming, editing, all that good stuff, but it was specifically for the Broncos, mm -hmm. and so we have like a a set that was for the news and so we kind of switch out the graphics to like bronco stuff and then we just record it i'd edit it put some footage on top uh record some features and yeah we try to get it out once a week and uh it would go on saturday uh so i did that for like an entire season and then the broncos decided to hire me at the end of that season cool yeah sounds, sounds good was... so have you been and how long ago was that uh that was back in 2014 Okay, and you're still working for the Broncos now? No, no, I, I uh, went freelance in 2017, so I was only nice. there for three years. Okay, that's good. That's yeah. good experience, though, you know. Is, yeah, it, I mean, is it something got, where you kind of got worn out, like you kind of doing the same thing? Or was it... Did, <laughs> did it you fresh? like football? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I liked football going in. Uh, uh -huh. Coming out... Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so what happened was... Um, they would kind of, we'd have like pretty good fun. You know, I was there when they went to the Super Bowl, so I got to experience all that. Um, but then afterwards, it was like, okay, I think it's time to, you know, move on or, you know, try to elevate my position. And it seemed like they kind of just wanted to keep doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, just kind of like updating these videos, uh, not really doing anything like too crazy, uh, mm -hmm. even though I tried pushing them on it. Like, I was like, yeah. let's do the entire scoreboard. Uh, instead of hiring, you know, like a studio like Cake or something, I was yeah. like, we can do it all in-house. And so I did it, but then, I don't know, it's just, uh, they were like, great, good job. And I was like, okay, well, you know, you guys could probably, you know, restructure our like, graphics department to where we have like an, art, an actual art director instead of everyone just kind of doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. And they weren't really too interested in that. And so I was like, well, I think it's probably time for me to like actually try working at a studio mm -hmm. uh, instead of sports because it felt more like news than it did um like working yeah, at a proper say, studio i was gonna say yeah 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 yeah. like i i feel like you know when you go to a live event or something and were, were was all the stuff that you were doing for the broncos was it all live event stuff or was it also well, like there's a difference between 
you know, what's being broadcast on TV versus what you're seeing on the screens around you, you know, was most of the stuff that you were doing was it for in-house versus mm -hmm. uh, uh, broadcast? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the scoreboard was its own, like, production. Mm -hmm. um, the All the different, like, channels that would come in to broadcast the, the game, they were doing their own thing. They were, yeah. Uh, yeah. they have, like, their own packages from, like, CBS and all that. Uh, so for us, we, we control everything that was on the scoreboard. And so that's where I would do my like defensive animations where it's like trying to pump up the crowd. Yeah. Uh, defense, like the touch defense. Yeah. Yeah. Did you use yeah. an actual fence? Uh, well, they <laughs> have that like those like little spiky things with the line. And so uh -huh. we would use the Denver D and then uh -huh. the fence, the so D fence. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I used to do graphics uh, for arena shows and things like like traveling arena shows, and there would be breaks and stuff where we do fun little graphics and and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the one that we would always do that I loved was make some noise, and mm -hmm. because there is such a weird feeling of power when you just take your mm -hmm. finger to the mouse button and you just press down and you click. And then all of a sudden, like 15,000 people just yeah. go nuts. You know, it just feels like power, you know? Yeah. Like they're my puppets. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Dance, dance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always found that phrase funny. Uh, make some noise. Like, why some noise? Like, right. yeah. shouldn't it be all the, make noise? Make all the noise? Just make noise. <laughs> make less noise. Yeah. 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 That would be funny. Now make everybody be quiet. Okay, now make a little nor more noise. Yeah. Okay, let's make less noise now. Yeah. I did one with a meter. I... You know, the little meter, you would make it go mm -hmm. up and down and you just fake it uh -huh. a little bit, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. funny. And then you, like, have it break when it gets to a certain point. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, the meter breaks and shatters. And That's so funny. funny. That's fun. Um, yeah, I would always change it from make some noise to something like bring the noise. Or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It just always peeved me. Uh, the yeah. sum part. Yeah. But yeah. Um, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you have to do not only like the uh, the the big screen and stuff? Did you also have to do the ads around the uh, like I I don't know the the, the, the Denver ad panels LED. Yeah, the mm -hmm. ad panels all the way around as well. Yeah. So yeah, those are we call the ribbons. Okay. And they're super thin. They're like fifty-two mm -hmm. pixels up, but it's like twenty thousand across or something. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. yeah, but we made up like a cool little system where you just create like this one piece and it gets uh, copied Looped. to all yeah. of it. Yeah. Like a pre-comp or something like that or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You, you loop it around, right? You do like yeah. twenty of the same thing or something like around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's always an interesting making sure that it may or a uh, tiles correctly so you, yeah. you mm -hmm. have yeah. to make sure that this part kind of gets extended on the other side yeah and so it doesn't look all weird but and those systems to implement those too were always so just clunky and i didn't do them too much because the problem is from arena to arena those those ribbon panels are just so different you know mm -hmm. but every time i dealt with them i felt like the it was like using a video toaster every time you tried to like yeah. log in and use them <laughs> But they're like super yeah. low res, so. Yeah, I mean, from far away, they they look pretty good. But yeah. when you get up close, you notice that there's like these giant caps in between all the LEDs. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's kind of confusing, but. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do so, anything else in in the arena, like when they had other shows and things like that come through? Yeah. So we had like, uh, my first year there, we had the Golden Cup. And so we had a game between Manchester and some other team, uh, Roma, I think. So we would do graphics for the board so that they can, instead of using the uh, Broncos sort of like layout, we can do like a soccer layout and have like their logos. And it, it was mostly static, but it was a nice little touch to kind of give it, you know, that sort of soccer feel instead of it being football. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah. Um, so, uh, let's let's talk about your your freelance work a little bit. I think there's always that feeling when you jump off of, yeah, you know, how am I going to make this work? Is do I have clients? Did you have some side hustles going on already, like yeah. when before you jumped off, or did you just cold turkey it? Yeah, I cold turkey it. I I saved up as much money as I could. I that's think good. it was okay. That's smart. Yeah, that's, yeah something that's like. Good. 
It wasn't quite six months, but it was close. Um, That's good. And so I just told myself, I'm going to see what I can do. And thankfully, it took uh, three weeks to get my first client. Wow. Yeah, Yeah, I didn't realize how fortunate I was on that one. But Mm -hmm. I was just like really excited to go and work. And so on my first gig, it wasn't like the most glamorous gig, but I just like went on it really hard because I wanted them to like book me again. Mm -hmm. And after I did that, they ended up like booking me for like four months straight. Wow, that's great. yeah, that pretty much just yeah, helped pay really for a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. What do you so. do mainly now? Like, what's yeah, your day to day type of work? You were doing you were doing film stuff, and you know, the two previous jobs you were actually going out and shooting, and then moving over to motion graphics and three D animation and stuff like that. Like, do you do you, do you miss it at all, or are you still doing it? You know. Uh, yeah, I try to avoid filming. I'm not a huge fan of like carrying the camera around, like setting up I'm wireless Right there mics. with you. <laughs> right there with you. Yeah. It's like if I can just uh, do the post production part and that's mm-hmm. it, like that's my preferred way of doing it. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times they just give me footage, I'll edit it or do like the treatment that they want for it. Um, but most of the time it's really just uh, doing design in 3D, uh, like style frames, and then eventually animating. Uh, but yeah, no production. Uh, aside from like stuff that's already been shot so right 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 right. that's good that's good yeah i'm the same way i like the part where i sit on my butt (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 it's always terrifying you're gonna run later right yeah gotta save that energy yo yeah 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 i could run a half marathon if i was just sitting down the whole time (laughs) that doesn't (laughs) make any sense (laughs) yeah he's like kicking his feet yeah (laughs) Let's talk about. I wanted to talk a little bit about the FITC, yeah, uh, uh, intro or whatever. Yeah, um, you that, helped out. You were on a team of what? It was probably like a lot of people, right? Five or six or something like that. People, uh, it was, it was a Aryev, good group of people. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, was so, Billy involved? I think or no? I don't, I don't no, think it, so. it was uh, Tokyo Megaplex. Oh, Tokyo Megaplex. Yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, who else was? Oh, uh, there was a couple of people that sort of like um, submitted a couple of shots. Mm-hmm. So you have um, Sam Burton. He mm-hmm. did like this really cool two D animation. Uh, then there was three character riggers. Um, it was aside from Tokyo Megaplex. It was uh, Christopher Peck and um, Green John, Mug. John. Yeah, Hutt. John. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so you had those were kind of like the main crew. But then, yeah, David Ayer came in. He like did a bunch of those cool like uh, race car shots. And then, um, what's his name? Uh, dang it! He he worked on the uh, Ghost in the Shell movie. Uh, Stylo, there we go. Okay. He, mm. he did like a shot for them as well. Stylo, yes. I I want to get I want to get that dude on the show. He's he's a funny guy. I've never actually met him. I just see like his work and like I've met like Marty Romances who like work worked with them i guess yeah. on some projects and so i always known him from like afar but never like in person he's hilarious man like like stylo I th- he was in uh, london last year i saw him present in london and he was just he was really funny nice i feel like we would i feel like it would be a, a fun i think it would i think it would be a fun show if you were on yeah so um did you did you have anything to do with, I know there were tons of Easter eggs in this video. Did you put any mm-hmm. Easter eggs in it or? There, this is a huge uh, edit. There is so much going on. I know. Yeah. It's insane. It's like a bunch of different people submitting shots. So then it just yeah. like slept. Um, but in terms of like Easter eggs, I tried to do like silly stuff. Cause most of the stuff I did was um, modeling the, uh, all the objects that you see in the bedroom. Mm, and yeah, 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 yeah. And also like animating the buildings. Um, I was I was trying to like hide little things in there for like the project file that we like gave away. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of mm-hmm. just like hide things inside the buildings and stuff like yeah. that. But, stuff, yeah, stuff. Uh, that's, that's a great. That's a great idea. Uh-huh. Just put it in there, and like nobody will ever see it in the video. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Like, oh man, I could think of such funny things you could put in there. I mean, yeah, the first like thing little... I would do is put a hidden dick butt model in there somewhere. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, that was a good one to hide. Um, it wasn't necessarily dick butt, but uh, 
crap i forgot oh uh put like a rick and morty yeah uh, portal just in one of them nice, nice. that's cool <laughs> Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. It was, uh, did you, did you, what was, so like, there's so many artists working on this one project together and you've all got to like, uh, match this same style, you know, the same mm -hmm. people esque style, yeah. you know, did that become difficult at all? You know, working with everyone? Uh, no, I think, um, what the point, what, uh, Mike was trying to do is have us kind of inject our own sort of, uh, style but he handled all of like the modeling and yeah. so we're using like his assets. So he just gave us like a big kit batch set and he's like, just have fun with it, do what you want to do. And so we kind of cool. just like took his elements and ran with it. That's nice. What has been your favorite how... thing to, Oh, sorry. You go ahead, Matt. No, I was just going to say how long, how long did y'all work on it? I mean, I know this was a, uh, these F FITC titles and they were probably not, you know, there was for, um, exposure dollars, you know, yeah. right? So, yeah. <laughs> how long? How long overall did y'all spend on working on it? You know, yeah, I think it was around. Um, we kind of were like working on it just a little bit at first, um, and it was around. I think I want to say January, and then it didn't ramp up until around March, where mm -hmm. it was like a full month of just like cranking on it, uh, so that it can be delivered. Um, whenever it was in, a in April when the show was. Yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't too bad. So what's your, what well, was your okay. favorite project to work on recently? Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I did work on, well, right now I'm working on a pretty fun project. It's um, for Samsung. And mm, cool. It's like for like an outdoor screen. And they're like the client's being really easy. So I'm able to kind of just play around and do that a lot. It just makes it so much easier. Yeah. It makes the job so much better when, when the client is just, you know, awesome, you mm -hmm. know, I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to do a little bit of X particles, but don't expect a lot of X. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, a little bit's fine. We don't care as long as it looks good. And I was like, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was just like, I'm always scared of when they say we need a ton of X particles. I was mm -hmm. like, I don't think you realize like what it, what its limitations are. Like, yeah, they, yeah. they think it can do anything. Or, or you know, a, a lot of people don't realize how far it can go. You know, a lot of people see just like, you know, X well, particles with particles. trails. You know, they think particles with trails and not realize that you can do so much more with it. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, I think ever since they came out with the flow field, uh, that right there was probably mm -hmm. like, I don't know, and also the layers, uh, how you can like do the add and subtract and stuff mm -hmm. and while you're combining the fields. I thought that was probably like the best thing that they did for it because otherwise yeah. you were just using uh, turbulence. For yeah. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm waiting I need for to that look GPU. Into that. Man. Yeah. God, that GPU. It's going to be awesome. I'm telling you, they get GPU like figured out and stuff like that. They're going to kick houdini's but a mm. little bit a little bit a little bit <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy that houdini can like do all the things but it just like requires you to know you know like linear algebra to even understand it <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah because so it's like degree and uh, hyperbi hyperbolic typology mm -hmm. whatever that is <laughs> i'm like i'm trying to learn how to make a like a mutating fleshy thing and I feel mm -hmm. like Houdini would probably be the best place to do it, but still trying to yeah. figure it out. Yeah, maybe. Pose morph. Just use a pose morph. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I just want to, I want something to like grow and then like the skin to like tear open and then it comes out. Like, I want to try That's something cool. like that. That sounds That's very cool. Houdini. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Stop being afraid of Houdini. Yep. <laughs> Available on uh, mocraft.com. <laughs> I've been meaning to check that out. It's a good course. Yeah. It's it a is good course. Good. Um, let's, I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, everydays as well. You have an everydays thing on your, your site and, uh, are you currently still going every day? Was this a previous yeah. everyday? Is this a, yeah, so I did it for about three years straight and then Ooh. for year four, it was kind of like, I don't know, eight months out of the year. And then I'm technically on year five and this one, I'm kind of being a little bit more, uh, relaxed about doing it. Um, so recently I figured out that you can actually grab models from video games 
And so I just did like a whole series on me grabbing models from Doom and then doing, you know. Wait, you can uh, grab the models from the video game? Yeah. So people will do it for you and they kind of host it on like websites like DeviantArt. Uh-huh. And so mm. all you need is um, a Blender and a plugin for it. It's called XNA, uh, something, uh, Laura, whatever. And it'll convert it into this thing called an XPS file. And so you can open it in Blender and save it in as FBX, and it has all of the uh, like the skeleton all set up, and yeah, it also has the UVs and just everything. So what I do is I send it into Substance, paint it, and then send it over to uh, Redshift, and I just do all the lighting uh, using these cool models. That's Damn. cool. Yeah. Jeez, that's a lot of everydays. And you got a lot of different varieties of styles and everything in here too, you know? What's your website, Luis? It's uh, luis-miranda.com. Gotcha, okay. Let me Google that for you, Matt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I, I I, mean, I'm sorry, but Luis Miranda is a very common name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some guy had uh, luismiranda.com. Uh-huh. I was thinking about like seeing if I could buy it off of him, but they were saying it was going to cost something like $2,000. Yeah. yeah. Oh, See, there's okay. a there's a doctor, uh, Matt Milstead, who is mm. also he's a P, he's got a PhD or something. And I said if he ever wanted to buy it from me, I would sell it to him for forty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got a PhD. He's got money, right? He's got yeah. He's a doctor. He's <laughs> rich. Come on. Rich. Yeah. Rich. <laughs> um, Matt, you're gonna have to take over for two seconds because I have to pee so bad that's all right it's early yeah. it's early for peeing i don't know i was gonna say yeah you know? yeah it's these cool. it's these so ice water drinks man they go right through you ice caffeine yeah. drinks i don't know what the deal is i'll be right back okay oh man this this series of the the doom stuff is awesome thank you yeah those uh those models are really nice the only issue with them that i found is that their uvs are kind of strange uh-huh um, so I even did like a little video where I'm breaking down like the issues that you'll encounter. Yeah. And like, I, you know how like uh, there's a UDEMs and it has like all those different tiles. These mm-hmm. ones are like UDEM 20, like just way somewhere else. So you have to like grab it and actually move it and center it into the uh, the 1001 or, or whatever the, t- uh, the main tile is. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, you have to like place it in there and then save it and then export it again as another FBX so that you can actually paint on it correctly. Cool. Man, these are insanely detailed. That Doom one is cool. Um, so you're, are you still, you're still doing everydays, right? No? Yeah? Uh, I, ca- I try to do them whenever I have time. So. Okay, so they're once in a while. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try That's not to cool. call myself too much of a everyday person because I'll do like, you know, a pretty good chunk of them Mm-hmm. like day after day but then i'll be like all right i i'm gonna go spend time in the mountains or something and then right. I'm just like i leak my computer right. i'm like i'm not touching that yeah <laughs> you live in denver you got to right yeah yeah just i just it. came back from uh mountain biking with my friend man i'm so jealous so jealous did you recently just released a getting started in substance painter for school of motion right mm-hmm. yeah. yeah that's cool yeah. um uh how'd that how'd that come about uh well they were uh, because I'm a TA for them. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, they were like, if you're a TA, we, we uh, would like you guys to contribute like articles and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I volunteered and they asked. And so I was like, I'm pretty good at substance and these other things. And they're like, yeah, let's do substance. <laughs> and so I just put together like uh, a little outline. They kind of critique it, you know, tell me what I mm-hmm. try to remove, whatever. Um, but yeah, they actually have like, I don't know, like three people that walk you through the entire process. Mm-hmm. Uh, if Wimbush is still watching it, he like did a uh, Unreal one. Yeah. And yeah, it seems like they just kind of walk you through the process, make things a lot easier. Uh, yeah. Because I've never written an article for a website before, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm back. Cool. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so you you also do tutorials. You've got a tutorial section on your site. And uh, you've got your whole C-Graph presentation on here, as well as mm-hmm. uh, some other things like this abstract octopus infinity loop <laughs> tutorial, yeah. Cinema 4D and Substance Painter. Tell us about that one. Ooh, sexy. Uh, so I was I was just kind of playing around one day on like one of my everydays, and I ended up mating, making that like really weird looking uh, octopus. 
uh, thing. And I thought it would be a fun one to show people because it's a pretty simple little process to get it to mm-hmm. work. Um, and for people who didn't have substance, I went ahead and just provided the textures so that they can follow cool. along. Yeah. Yeah. Just showing all the cool things that you can do with substance and how to combine it with like subsurface scattering and also. Um, Did you actually make the textures yourself? Uh, well? Actually, that one's. Um, you can actually download it and if you have a subscription. There's this um, like octopus texture that you can download. Cool. So I went ahead and downloaded it, combined it with another texture, which was like an elephant skin. Okay. And using like some of the masking, I, I show people how to like uh, remove parts of the of like the paint or sorry of the material so that you can see through it, see the one underneath, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Logan in the chat says that That's one cool. single tutorial taught him so much. That's cool. Yeah. That's very and, cool. Um, we haven't really talked about render engines, about what yeah. you're using currently. Are you using a mix, or you have one favorite? Yeah, I like to use uh, Redshift uh, um, the most. I, I like I, I started out on Octane, and mm-hmm. Octane, you know, was great to me for a good while. Uh, but then I worked over at the mill for like ten days, and they were mm-hmm. like 100% Redshift. And I saw all the crazy stuff you could do with it, and mm-hmm. I don't know. It just seemed like I seem to understand it a little bit better than Octane. And so I kind of just stuck with that one. It's yeah. cool. And uh, on your your uh, your page under work, you actually have something that you did that was uh, Op- Oculus Rift. I wanted to bring yeah. that one up a little bit. Is this something you yeah. did for them, a uh, spec? Was it for a client? Like, who, who was this for specifically? Yeah, so it was technically for Facebook, but it was through an agency. Okay, um, cool. The issue that came up with that one, um, they, like, I don't know, something really weird happened to where it never actually, like, got released. Mm-hmm. Um, but Had that we, happen a few times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, we did all this work for it, you know, coming up with all this, like, concept art and actual animation. And, uh, yeah, it was supposed to be for Best Buy presentation where oh. we, when you go into the store, you can see the screen. And mm-hmm. it was actually touchscreen, so you can actually navigate through it. And... What I animated was when you click on one of them, it reveals like the headset, and then you can like tw- turn it, and it mm-hmm. switches to another position, and there you can see like some of the features, and it'll take you to a different page, saying we have this really cool audio system or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was supposed to be really interactive, but something weird happened with it, and so I just kind of just had the renders, but never got to like put it in a Best Buy. So. Yeah, I like these, uh, these variations. Yeah, the additional designs. Yeah, those are very cool. Yeah, these were all like when we were just playing around, trying to like find a cool uh, look for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Robo cool. Recall one. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Love me some Robo Recall. See, I got this new <laughs> space in here. I got a little extra, more space than I had before for my play area. So right. I got to get my, my Robo Recall on. It'll be fun. Yeah. I broke my TV playing uh, VR, so... <laughs> See, this is a good segue into time. VR Corner. Uh-huh. We, we should talk a little bit about some VR. Let's, let's talk about that for a minute. How, how did okay. you break your TV? All right. Well, I was playing this game. It's called Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, and so like the whole thing <laughs> is about getting jump scared and stuff if uh-huh. you mess up. And so there's a part where once you're dead, you wake up in this area where you have to like either select or restart the, uh, the game or you can like exit to the menu. And behind you is this like uh, fox animatronic who's just kind of like staring at you. But you can pick up like this little pumpkin. And I was like, oh, I wonder if I throw this at him, will I get jump scared again? <laughs> and so then uh, I kind of just tossed it, not realizing that my TV was right there. And I just like smacked it. And Aww. I was like, oh, crap. So I turned on the TV to see if I did something. And yeah, there's just like a crack in the middle. And it's just Man. spider web. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. I've I've punched my I've punched my fan a, bu- a numerous times, and uh, one time I got real close to my desk and it was a big heavy desk, and I was swinging uh, like down below and just smacked my hand. Ah, uh, it's awful. Yeah. I told I told you the story about uh, my friend Steven, right? I was playing with him. Were you? I I was. Oh, playing you were on the him. other yeah. end. I was on the other end. So, okay. Yeah, it was, uh, what's the name of that? Uh, dead, uh, dead, red, uh, dead and no, buried. Dead yeah. and buried. Yeah, and, dead and, buried. and they were in a shootout at the, the virtual corral. 
and mm-hmm. Matt was shooting at him and he was behind a table and he decided he was going to jump, kind of jump roll out and duck behind a pillar. And so yeah. he goes not realizing that there was a wall in real life right oh, there and God. smack <laughs> so hard, his face so hard into the wall. Like he, um, he's lucky he didn't break his nose. Yeah. I was a, I was a, a scout leader for a short amount of time and uh, I did like a VR night with all the kids and one of them did that exact same thing. Like just ran full force and we were in a really small room. He ran full force straight into the wall, like busted up his nose mm. and everything. And I was like, please don't tell your parents. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't quite had that happen to me yet. Although I was playing this one game, it was called uh, Catastrophe. You play as a cat and the whole thing is you have to like knock things off. Uh, <laughs> I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, cat catastrophe. It, yeah. It, so then, uh, yeah, I had like a coffee on my desk and I was just like oh, smacking no. things. Then I just knocked the <laughs> coffee over. <laughs> I was like, I need to stop playing this game. I'm like, I'm That's done. Funny. Yeah, I'm going to have to be careful in here. I got a lot of gear. I'm going to have to really yeah. kind of like rein in the play area, the, the grid. Right. To make sure, just really make sure that I'm, I'm a little overly cautious and yeah. knocking over a bunch of like camera gear or something. <laughs> that would not be good. What else have you been playing? What what do you enjoy playing? Uh, I have a light or Beat Saber. That one's pretty fun. Have you guys modded it to where you can install mm-hmm. um, like uh, just third party games or whatever? Oh or yeah, songs. Oh yeah, I haven't done Hardcore. that yet. No. I'm really into Beat Saber. It's nice. it's actually <laughs> part of my exercise routine because of my my training for the the half marathon or or just the running in general. You have to do some sort of other aerob, like not even aerobic, but like fat burning activity, right? Like thirty minutes, mm-hmm. and I end up playing for three hours instead. But uh, so I, I've been doing this It'd thing where it'd be nice where, to have an extra three hours to play beats. There. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't have like, I don't even have like, I'm not even going to in there to beat scores, right? It's just about mm-hmm. the fun. It's just about, and I'm, I, I can go up there in the expert mode pretty well for most of them Mm -hmm. but it's it's about like adding a little dance to it like i mean you don't have to move your feet but adding your feet to it and really getting into it and um i was getting tired of just the same songs and our our buddy jeremy was like dude you got to get this extension you put in this little thing and then there's like hundreds of songs that you can play and Mm. And I don't know if you've experienced this, but but some of them are really good, and some of them are just awful, and some of them aren't even timed right, and just garbage. Yeah. But you know. interesting. Yeah, you... We we looked for this one guy in particular who has like the best ones. We think mm-hmm. um, he did one for uh, Bruno Mars, um, Twenty Four Carat. Yes, and mm-hmm. yeah, that one's like really fun to play because it does make you feel like you're dancing, like when yep. you're doing kind of like smacking the things and whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it feels better when you're dancing. So. You should try. Right. You should try uh, Gangnam Style or however you pronounce that, because yeah. the way that it makes you hit the things, it makes you do the dance by by the way that it makes you hit the things. It's so awesome. That's funny. It's so great. Now, have you guys played the um, the Cha Cha Slide on it? No. No, that's. <laughs> I bet that's good. I'll need yeah. to download these. I'll need, Dave, you'll have to send me a link. I, I don't remember what song it is, but there's one where. They they put so many of the little thing, slicey what do you call them the little cubes in there mm-hmm. that they're all just almost meshed together so you're just like mm-hmm. smearing around your your hand in there nice. that's really fun <laughs> that's funny yeah the, yeah. In, the so install the, is not not bad the what so the install isn't isn't bad it was really oh, easy yeah. Yeah. yeah apparently it breaks every time they update the game so that's one thing <sighs> to kind of keep in mind yeah um i don't know so far it's been working fine for me yeah that's it's the one i, I don't know i so i go back and forth between console and you know computer especially <laughs> since i built that console killer machine yeah but it's like i find so many more errors and issues playing games on the pc than i do just playing on a console like console i feel like everything's just smoothed out and i never have to deal with anything yeah yeah but versus playing on the pc it's like oh it'll just stop you know it'll stop (laughs) working you know yeah yeah that is something that 
uh, I've been noticing lately because before my computer was just connected directly to my TV mm -hmm. and all I had to do was just turn off my monitors and turn on the TV and everything would switch over automatically. Yeah. Uh, but now my TV is a lot further. So the only way to play is on my computer. Um, and, mm. but so I can't really do on the couch mm -hmm. and I wanted to play through uh, mass effect during the quarantine and yeah. I have it on both PC and my, on my Xbox. Mm -hmm. And I just ended up playing it on the Xbox because it was just so much easier to just sit down on the couch yeah. and play. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. I, I just bought the new Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, you know? Like, that released this past Friday. I was, mm -hmm. like, I picked it up that day. Oh, and nice. it's, it's one of my favorite games of all time. And playing through it just brings back a flood of memories, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Especially the soundtrack alone. And yeah. it's like I I didn't buy it for PC. I specifically bought it for Xbox because it's just so much. I feel like it's it's going to be better, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I do like using like having the ability to play different controllers on PC. Yeah, because um, I did buy into the um, the Steam controller when it came out. I did too. And, yeah, and like I really like that they. <laughs> <laughs> if I wouldn't say it's crap, I think it has a, like a really steep learning curve. But uh huh. Like, once you like figure it out and how it works for you, like I, I can't really play first person shooters on a normal controller anymore because I need the gyroscope to aim and all the, all the cool stuff that you get on the controller. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily get it anywhere else. Yeah. What about? Right, I gotta I gotta run to the bathroom. Oh, Dave, so sorry. Right oh yeah. What about when? Uh, um... Well, I guess Matt needs to be here for this. I was going to ask about the Steam Link because you can do mm. that uh, that deal where it like, beams it to your TV or whatever, but it, it seems to me like there would be some sort of lag. Like, I don't feel like you could play real accurate first-person shooters. Yeah, that one's probably better for like um, puzzle games. Yeah. yeah. But if you have a wired connection, it does have a much better uh, latency to it. Uh, to where you can actually play pretty all right. But if you're going to be like in a competitive environment, you definitely want to play directly on the PC. Yeah, I had a problem with this TV because I, I don't know if I talked about this on the show or not, but we were playing Halo with Aria the other day, and I just felt like I was playing like potato, you know? And it's just like I just could not get any kills. I was getting like four kills in a game. I'm like, what is going on? Like, why? I feel dumb right now. Like, why can I not make this work? And Turns out when I when I moved, the TV reset itself out of game mode, and that split second difference made all the difference in the world when it was mm -hmm. out of game mode because it's just it's more of like a you know twenty four twenty four p or something I don't know whatever it is the hertz the hertz are different you know mm -hmm. and so, I usually yeah, don't like playing that, at sixty yeah and you know how it is yeah. you you don't like to keep the hertz up because any anyone like us can see that super super annoying high refresh rate you when you're watching regular tv like where it makes things look like it's a it's a play rather than a movie yeah. but yeah. yeah that's that's all it was and and what's his name from uh nvidia actually was talking about that with the what they're doing they're doing something with what is it called they came out with something on the announcements it was about gaming as far as like the the latency i don't remember what it's called maybe somebody in the chat mm. can bring it up but it's like something that helps with latency in games mm. uh because they do have like those uh geforce screens that are like uh, not geforce uh what was it g g sync there we go mm. uh, and those ones are supposed to be uh better integrated with the v sync of the the monitor mm -hmm. and so if you have something like a game like doom which uh, can play at like 200 frames a second. Uh, it better syncs to that than to just have like the V-Sync at 60 frames or whatever. Yeah. Well, he was showing some examples because he was talking about the first of all the reaction time. Like if somebody's, let's say, between a crack or something, and you you got a scope on them, you know, and the amount of time it takes for you, Nvidia Reflex, thank you. Mm. Uh, Nvidia is doing something to where like your react you know you've got the time that's the reaction time that's x amount of milliseconds right and then you have the amount of time it takes for you to to shoot with your scope on and and how long i guess that's gonna take for it to 
I don't know, get to your card and then to the server that's hosting the the game. I don't know exactly like which specific pieces of it cause the most lag. Like where I mean, you've got the human element element. You've got the you've got your internet, you know, you've got your ping and all of that. You've got the game itself. You've got your computer. You've got all these different elements. And uh, he was showing the difference as to what it looks like um, when it comes to frames per second. And uh, if you pause a game, you can kind of see like a blur of somebody moving. And uh, it's a little more clear and precise whenever NVIDIA Reflex is on. I really don't understand the technology. I'm going to mm. Oldies. In my day, we had Mario, and we liked it. You know, so. <laughs> we liked it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It sounds pretty cool. Um, I'm not really like a competitive online gamer. I mostly just play single player, and then that's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not. Uh, I'm not very competitive. I play, but I'm not very competitive because I'm not very good at yeah. it. But Fall Guys is about as competitive as if I competitive as i get yeah i'm not very you know. good at fall guys either <laughs> no <laughs> i haven't really learned the levels yet but i was playing yesterday and not doing well i would never yeah. make it i would never make like the first round and so aria would just start over so we could keep playing together <laughs> <laughs> is uh, it on pc it is on yeah. pc yeah yeah it's pc and like ps4 i think okay. so yeah, is it not on um, Xbox? Why isn't it on Xbox? It's not. I don't know. I don't know. I thought converting something from like Xbox and you know PC and PS4 and Switch was all just a click of the button on on uh, Unreal. On, on, on Unreal. On, on Unreal. Yeah. 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 You know, isn't it? It's supposed to. Be. But they're also they're also dealing with like cheaters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, who just make their yeah. character float. You know, and get to the end. Mm. And so, uh, yeah, that's the whole thing with the on, online uh, PC version is that they went back to using the names that just say Fall Guy 1099 or Fall Guy 2048 because people were naming their Fall Guys and using exploits yeah. to make like ridiculous names come up the size of the screen and you know, just hacking it so that like you couldn't see your character. And it's like, man, gosh, who even, who even bothers to spend the time to come up with that stuff yeah put a giant youtube know, video in place of their name you know yeah right <laughs> yeah, hit that trolls. smash that yeah. subscribe button smash that bell ring that bell whoa mm. yeah. do you guys say that on your videos sometimes when, yeah ironically <laughs> yeah I, uh, uh, so I've been chatting with Jules in the Octane, uh, chat. Sorry to ch kind of change the subject, yeah. but, uh, Dave and I were talking about this before the show because Jules was showing off all this cool stuff and, you know, this, uh, this can go in Ravcock if you want to cut it up or whatever. No. But, uh, we were curious if like the, uh, you go right here. If the, if it was going to take a speed hit or whatever with animation and, mm. uh, he was saying, no, it doesn't. And, uh, the motion blur and post effects, will be the same because they use the same universal camera um, in Brigade. Uh, uh, oh. But he says they've got a faster depth of field and motion blur at pretty good quality, but it does take a... Uh, the exact uh, octane depth of field is also real-time, just a little bit noisier in the fast mode, you know? Hmm. So, I mean, I don't care. Six, I don't need 60 frames per second. If, I, I can, I'll handle 30 frames per second if it gets me some slightly better depth yeah. of field. Oh, you know? no. Yeah, I'll I'll even go as far as to one frame per second. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, well, I would like to see an example of that in some of his posts. I know he's getting ready for right. GDC, GDC mm -hmm. and that's what he was writing on his Facebook post. He's getting his presentation together. I can't wait to see that. And yeah, that's, that's so one good. of those things where I would love to see some animation in there of of mm -hmm. something. Yeah, you know, just to see how Brigade handles that. Yeah. He yeah. said, um, I asked him when we could, when, when do we get Brigade? And he said, it's a function of how many Octane materials and nodes they have left to convert. So they're having to convert every single mm. Octane node, you know, an Octane material before they can release it to the users. So he says they're pretty close, as you can see in the video, but they're missing a few texture transforms and OSL, but that's coming in fast. They yeah. finally have SSS and working in, in, uh, in hardest scenes and mesh emitters with mini mesh emitters and stuff. I can I imagine mean, OSL I also is think about kind that. of a tough thing to 
to do when it comes to brigade, right? Because all that has to be compatible. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And compiling at the same time and sending it Good to the Lord. GPU and stuff like that. I can, yeah, I can imagine that's, that's rough. Hmm. But I mean, can you also imagine like, you know, doing, doing some of this new stuff that like, if you can incorporate some of the new things that, uh, Maxon's been showing off with like Neutron, you know? Mm-hmm. So like you get the speed of that and then being able to also like, use brigade as well it's like gosh it blows my mind how fast things are going to be in in the next you know year or so yep gosh we just had to go through COVID times in order to like you know for the the whole you know uh simulation that we're living in it had to upgrade you know yeah that's that's what you know right that's what it was that's what it was you wouldn't notice the glitches yeah as much. Dude, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> every would... every time I go to the dentist, every time I, you remember that episode of Futurama where Bender goes to get his upgrade, you know? Yeah. And like uh, to be compatible with that other robot because he mm-hmm. hates that robot, and then he gets the upgrade, and he's like, "I love this robot," you know? Mm-hmm. It's like every time mm-hmm. I go to the dentist and they kind of knock me out, I always think that like that's the system upgrading me. Of course, now that I put it out into the system, the system knows what I'm thinking. Right. And so now it's going to be right. like, oh. And well, I, and I the kept system thinking. You already like, knew what you were thinking. You didn't have to right, say it. Right. I know. I know. <laughs> Speaking of, have y'all watched Devs? Have y'all watched Devs? Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Oh, man. All right. So, uh, 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 so it was recommended on the show last week, right? And last uh, week? was, that was last it last week? week? No, it was two weeks ago. Okay. With uh, with uh, uh, the the Russells, right? The, the Russells, yeah. The Russells, right? They recommended Devs, so I'm like, okay, okay. They they recommended it. This is gonna be good. So I started watching it. Uh, spoilers for anyone who you know. I'm not gonna say. I won't spoil anything. No, no spoilers. So it takes six episodes before I started liking the show. Mm-hmm. Mm. What person? What type of person? hates themselves so much that they will sit through six episodes of a show that they despise you've apparently before it finally gets good well because you know jill and willie were telling me that it's good and i'm like okay i trust them i believe in them you know uh-huh. and so yes i got to six episodes before it finally got good but it was like right. it was like well there's i mean it's okay it's all right it ended <laughs> it's on, pretty good i know? guess it's pretty good he said the thing it's not it's not it's not it's not mind blowing. It's not like the best show. It's like if you took a normal show and fed it a bunch of Xanax, right? <laughs> Every actor was on like 20 hits of Xanax, you know, 24 bars. And then they they said, OK, now act 24 like bars or 24 person, bars, 24 bars. <laughs> yeah, it's like it, it's like a it's like a I don't know. A, a, a Prozac induced uh, tech, whatever you know. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, it was it was it was okay. It was okay, but like the murder mystery part, I I didn't give two craps about. It's like that main character, I hated. I hated the entire time. I'm just like, I don't like you. You're not a good actress. Like maybe it's because you're on so much Xanax <laughs> throughout the entire show that like I just don't like it. But like the ending was neat. It was it was cool. Like the whole tech stuff was awesome. I wish they had focused more on that. You Maybe know? you have to be on Xanax to appreciate it. Maybe. Yeah, that might be the case. I could I could see that. I could yeah. see that. Yeah. 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 Hmm. yeah. Anyway. Well. But if you're interested, if you're interested in a really slow show <laughs> that has an interesting concept, you know that you will hate for the first six episodes and then enjoy the last two watch devs. Nice. Nick Offerman's awesome though. I, I, I like him. He's good. So, you know, speaking of getting on this whole train, we need to do Mo graph recommends, but I, I do yeah. want to do one Beeple's people. Let's mm. do it. Okay. Oh, twin peak season three. Oh, <laughs> so good. Oh yeah, if if you yeah, you know what? Twins Twin Peaks season 3 was great from the second it started. Don't, no, you don't need 5 chapters. You need you just 
Twin Pe- Twin Peaks in general is just great. Sorry, that's in the chat. Lucky so, was talking about it. Peaks season three. So the the background we put on you here is is it's an ode to people. It's one of it's not an ode to people. It is people's, but we put it in ode to people. Behind you here, a little futuristic city. So we we've been mentioning that there's been some throwback beeples here and there lately and so there's there's one that i wanted to bring up this is september 1st year of our lord 2020 but yeah <laughs> get out your beeple viewer of choice for me that's twitter i'm on twitter.com slash beeple like you do this is called mm-hmm. the first emoji and mm-hmm. this is like super throwback and i really liked this i thought we mm-hmm. could could uh, work on the story a little bit because we were talking about what these emojis are Mm-hmm. Like what? What is the significance of the emojis and and why? And I, and I feel like you know you got all these different people groups that went out to the different planets that kind of spread out throughout the universe whenever the univ- whenever the Earth was dying or destroyed or, or whatnot. And mm-hmm. you see these references to emojis and what are they and and things. And I think some of these societies have maybe over the years built and crumbled and whatnot and. So there's the lore of the emojis. And in some of these societies, the, the emojis still are what they originally were. And, and some of them, people still understand what they are. But just the, the whole thing where all these planets are so far apart and people can't talk to each other anymore in these different societies, this one is kind of like rebuilding their society at this point. And they are, they are rebuilding this. This is their first emoji that they're going to build in their new... 2.0 version of their society yeah i don't know i i feel like these are uh maybe like uh i don't know like this is like a spiritual thing these emojis you know hmm. does, like this does, is like a is it a type of emoji does that matter like does that make a big difference of course, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you've got the happy emoji that just wants to spread happiness. Mm-hmm. It's like these are these are these are the oh, the old Greek gods, you know. If you build like, a happy emoji, is, does that bring happiness? Is that the the lore? I would hope so. Oh. I would hope so. You know, like you know, then you've got the uh, the the patron saint of of <laughs> eggplants. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the yeah. I would like to see know. them build an eggplant like this. Right, mm. right, right. Yeah, I imagine you could, could be really like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> perfect. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like emojis can be like the um, kind of like the hieroglyphs from the Egyptians, but yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. And like it's a new language, but instead of it being uh, you know like based on fanatics it's based on pictures yeah mm-hmm. of course we've reverted <laughs> back i love what i love the textures especially in the tongue i love the slotted wood the pink slotted wood yeah. kind of painted yeah and the cool. texturing on it and uh i can't tell if this is part of the post process or if it's actually on the wood on the tongue like the kind of discoloration on it that looks really cool and of course the birds yeah yeah the birds always gotta have the birds gotta have the birds That's right funny and these the people, birds, though. they're very, they're very, what would you call them, these people? Now, I, I do notice that this person here is exactly the same as this person here. They, they have the exact same <laughs> No, pose. that's funny. That's and funny. the one back here and the one over there. But um, I think it'd be funny if like there's... Pilgrims. Yeah, kind of like pilgrims. Um, or something, maybe something medieval. Maybe Friar hmm. Tuck back in there somewhere. I think it would be funny yeah. if he put just like some modern person in here for some reason, just randomly, <laughs> you know. Do you think? Oh, okay, so let's uh, let's do a hypothetical with people's people, right? Okay. okay, go ahead, caller. So I feel like what? I said, go ahead, caller. I feel like I feel like the um, it's gotten it's gotten pretty like you know a lot of his stuff is very political and stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 over the past year, at least. Do you think if Biden gets elected and things have a semblance of normalcy again, you know, versus being so chaotic, mm. do you think he's going to continue that or nothing's going to calm know. down? It doesn't matter who gets elected. Nothing's going to calm down. 
So uh, I disagree. I don't know. I disagree. I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> you think you don't think chat. he'll go back to it? Huh? <laughs> you th you don't think he'll he'll uh, he'll change it up a bit, or do you think he's gonna stay political? Uh, I mean, Mike is a political person. Yeah, I guess. He's he's not like he's gonna take the two TVs down behind him with Fox News and CNN <laughs> no, running twenty four seven. No, he's not. You know, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, I mean, I can imagine that there are gonna be protests regardless of who gets elected. Uh, people are either right. gonna protest Trump, or the mm -hmm. conservatives are gonna protest Biden. Biden. And so, who's yeah. election fraud? So yeah, it's gonna be one of the two, and and there'll be plenty of material for Mike to to go off of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Stoner talk anyway. promotion designers. Well, how do you think I how do you think I came up with the idea in the first place? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I like it. It looks good. Hmm. Cool. That's the only one I have though. Yep. So, you know, NBD. So let's get to the MoGraph <laughs> recommends, shall we? Okay. Unless you got some links. Do you have links? Did you uh, I just wanted to talk about like Cyberpunk and yes. um, Let's do that the boys, first. you know. Oh, okay, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven or whatever it's called. Over yeah, over nine thousand. Yeah. <laughs> did it did it get delayed again? Uh, it, it's still on November, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it was delayed. It was supposed to be April twentieth. Mm -hmm. Then it was supposed yeah. to be September something september 30th something like that it's supposed to be 420 and then my birthday and now it's november oh that's funny yeah, yeah. no more delays cyberpunk 27 expected to hit its release date that's according to forbes nice. yeah I, i'm i really hope they stick with it uh but yeah one of the things that uh, kind of bummed me out is I was like, oh, well, with uh quarantine i was like this would be the perfect game right. to play you know? yeah 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 but yeah, then they had to delay it, and now we have to wait until like election season to you know be able to play. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll still be in quarantine. Uh, don't November nineteenth is the release date. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. right before Thanksgiving. Well, when things slow down because your clients are like not doing anything over the Thanksgiving holiday, you can play it. You know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever not been busy a a Thanksgiving week. Yeah, it's because Christmas stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But Black Friday <clears throat> or something. Play it all day on yeah. Black Friday. Yeah, totally. I can see that. Especially since you can't go shopping, you know? <laughs> yeah. You really think that's going to stop people? Uh, you would hope so. <laughs> well, a lot of people have said they're not going to even open. They're not going to do Black Friday. Yeah, I'm Probably, sure they will. So. Um, so so what do you think? What do you think about this? What, what are you looking forward to in this game? Well, I kind of feel like uh, Cyberpunk is sort of that game that you always wanted, but you never got. And so now someone, like, answered, you know, realized that there was enough of a need for something like this. Mm -hmm. And to just, like, cram that much, like, crazy sci-fi and, like, their art direction. And, I don't know, they, it looks like they hired, like, some of the best, um, like, hard surface designers and just crammed them all in a single room. And they are like, make a bunch of cool shit. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. they did. And so, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's so unusual for it to come out uh, because it doesn't kind of fit the the games that people deem I, profitable. I don't mm -hmm. really know anything about this game. What is this game about? Uh, it takes place uh, in this city called Night City, um, and you get to choose either three uh, life paths is what they call it. You can okay. either start out as a corporate sort of like espionage person who's just like an enforcer, you can do cool. like a gang. Uh, so you're like in a street gang. And so you're kind of just like the street kid. And then there's a third one that's a little bit more Mad Max where you start out outside of the city and you make mm -hmm. your way in. Hmm. And so you kind of get introduced to the uh, to the world in that way. Cool. Do you think that, I don't know, maybe they've said or not, when you pick those paths, do you end up playing like three different versions of the game or does it kind of all become one at some point is there a free play mode like gta and all that i imagine uh, i'm not sure if there is I, I would i would hope so because it's mm. going to be like this huge city yeah and it's going to be you know i don't know it's very interactive uh but from what i understand is that you will start in one of those three and then it'll kind of go into a general timeline 
at which point it'll have small variations. It won't be like completely different. Mm -hmm. hmm. It looks I guess pretty. It's kind of like GTA. I'm watching the trailer right now. But Lucky what, in the what, chat says, "Bet you'll get a free copy when you buy a 3090." <laughs> yeah, I'm def That's definitely one that I would buy on PC because you want to mm -hmm. you want to play that 4K 60. Just do it up. Yeah, I don't it also think supports gonna... RTX. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. Turn that RTX on, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Delicious. I wonder if they have to change the lighting. Like, do they have to change the lighting when uh, when dealing with RTX? You know. Like, mm -hmm. is it a completely different light scenario? Because I, I've seen, I've seen the things that I've seen of RTX on and off. You know, it, it's significantly different because you're talking about like different bounces and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's like I don't know. Yeah, it kind of seems like it's a um, real time uh, global illumination solution. Right. And so I have a friend who. He he doesn't do 3D stuff, but mm -hmm. he you know he got really excited over RTX and he was like, hey, so if there's like this red light, the light will actually bounce around and you'll see like these color casts. And I was like, yeah, that's it's called the global illumination. We have yeah. to <laughs> you know spend like way more time rendering it, but I guess now it's all real time. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. So it's interesting how they're starting to get to that point where uh, you know real time engines are become just as good as you know something that takes you know 24 hours to render. Right. Have they said are they going to have online play or? Mm, I don't think so. I think it's uh, focusing on being first part. Uh, sorry, single player the whole time. Oh, okay. I was just curious if, if like you could play with people, if you if there could be like a mode just like GTA Online mode. It seems like that's mm -hmm. such a cash cow that everybody would do it now. Yeah, and that's the reason yeah, that right? the new GTA isn't saw... really even coming out. <laughs> I saw I saw a meme on the like gaming subreddit where it said uh, the PS2 got three different versions of Grand Theft Auto, and Grand Theft Auto Five came out, and there's been three P <laughs> PlayStation since. Oh my god! You know, yeah. Because it came out during the 360 PS3. Yeah, PS3. Then there's PS4, and then PS5. Yeah. There'll be PS5. Yeah. And you'll have yeah only one. Uh, GTA. I had yeah. this version on Xbox 360, and when I got the Xbox One, I got a copy. And then when I mm -hmm. went full PC again, I got it on PC. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And then I have spent you guys bought those shark cards? The what? <laughs> the shark cards uh, where you buy like the in-game currency. I have spent uh, probably three hundred dollars in in-game currency for GTA. I'm not gonna so lie. So stupid. Yeah. That's why that's why I they have, don't need to make a new one. Yeah, I've got like man, I have got apartment buildings, arsenals, bunkers, ridiculous like giant like trailers full of cool gear. Nice. It's it's a lot of fun though. It's a lot of fun to have all that cool <laughs> gear and pony noobs with it. It's like yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a 4-year-old who can't who can't buy anything and you just drive up in this gigantic arsenal and just blow them out of the water 50 times every time they respawn. <laughs> Aha! Uh -huh. I have expendable income. I don't know. <clears throat> you know, yeah. you know the Family Guy <laughs> thing. I have expendable income. No, okay, never mind. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, yeah, I, don't know. I haven't been able to play online. Uh, well, I, I did play once, but somebody just kept running me over, over and over. So it's kind of annoying. That's yeah. yeah that gets annoying. Like you have to go into like a certain mode and like become invisible for a second so that people won't kill you 50 times you got to get out of the yeah. area get away from them mm -hmm. so you can go like get your mods and build up everything again and get some more ammo so dumb the mods are dumb like i what's the point of modding a game like a, a game like that you know like the uh, well, the, uh I, I tried playing it one time or a mod like a mod in a good way i don't know i i tried playing gta online and someone had modded it to where they could just like let like let planes crash down over the entire area and it's like i couldn't even play the game you know yeah know. well that's that's hacks though rather than a mod i mean yeah, it is technically a mod but yeah um question in the chat about uh 
Well, we talked about this earlier, but yeah, like four thirty eighties or a thirty ninety. We're going for two thirty nineties. Yeah, the the amount of money that two, you get more you, the the CUDA CUDA oh. to dollar cost, you know, yeah, is is better for four thirty eighties versus uh, well, two thirty nineties. Unless unless VRAM is a big deal for you, I don't. Yeah, you have to if keep VRAM that is in a big deal. consideration. But if you are somebody who is a a uh, an efficient modeler. And now mm-hmm. uh, you're using a lot of instancing and your yep. project files aren't going to be that big, you know? Yep. And who knows what's going to happen? That's the other thing. Who knows what's going to happen down the line as far as like that same technology that's in Unreal 5, as far yeah. as polys are concerned. Maybe VRAM, yeah. maybe they even know that. Maybe they're thinking ahead on that. They're like, VRAM isn't going to be as much of an issue moving forward. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, any other links besides that one? Uh, no, I was going to say um, The Boys, if you guys have been watching that. I've heard of it. I, I haven't have watched it. it too. I saw that there was a UFC game where they are sticking advertisements inside of it for The Boys on Amazon mm. in order to make it feel more realistic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I don't know sticking why. ads inside of a game just to make more money. That's so sleazy. I mean, but Madden kind of also does that. Um, I know they do. They like, uh, Mm -hmm. but they're advertising their own thing to the person. So as soon as you start, they're like, hey, get on this uh, Madden Ultimate team and uh, pay a bunch of money to, you know, get those uh, packs. Yep. As long as these things are dynamic. Mm -hmm. Because the worst thing is you're playing a video and it's like, or you're playing a video game and it's like, Blockbuster Video, check us out, you know? (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you got to make them dynamic at least. Have a little server. Okay, so let's do <clears throat> some MoGraph recommends. We're going to start out with your favorite movie. Mm, okay. Uh, my favorite movie is The Fifth Element. Okay. Nice. I can see. Yeah. Nice. I, I, I watched it for the first time a few months ago. Like, I had seen no. pieces and pieces. Yeah. Here's the thing. I had seen pieces and pieces here and pieces there and probably throughout my history of life, hmm. you know, it's like I had seen the whole movie, but I finally hmm. sat down and watched it from beginning to end. It's okay. Dallas, yeah, it is, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You got to watch I it. I like Ruby times. Rod. Yeah. yeah. You're crazy, He's man. Like the best part. You're crazy. <laughs> like, you're green, super green. Yeah. I but, love the, yeah, the yeah, guy like who background. comes to the door. He comes to the door at the beginning to try and rob him. Oh, yeah. Like, give me the cash. Give me the cash. And he's like, yeah, nice he has, like, thing on his head. You like yeah. it? And he starts dancing. I always <laughs> wanted a part two for that movie, but you know they, would, they wouldn't do it right. Yeah. I mean, if you watch that other movie that the director made, uh, the one uh, that takes place in space. Super uh, expensive one that totally just lost money for them. Yeah. Uh, was they included a couple of characters from... Uh, the fifth element kind of like as background stuff. So like I this big circular. This oh, that's funny. What, what are you talking about? Um, uh, do I need to go it's, check this out? There's hold on. I'll let me look up Luke Besson. Uh, Valerian and the city of something. Valerian. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, All right. They're doing a Lucy too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just looked at this IMDb. It was like Lucy was okay, but like, did, why are they doing a Lucy two? Sorry, hmm. Valerian. Yeah, that was the movie. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Hmm. All right. Yeah. I'll check that out. I haven't actually seen it, so I wouldn't. I can't confirm for myself, but I heard that they put those same aliens from the beginning of the movie in there somewhere. That's funny. Oh, okay. I'm gonna That's check funny. it out now. So it's like the same universe. Mm-hmm. Essentially. Yeah. 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 All right, what about music? Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Synthwave. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh man, man you I got sent a, me I got something. A good, yeah, I got. I a haven't good, checked uh, it out yet. I've got a good uh, playlist for you. Then I'll send it over to you, yeah. Louise. Okay. It's what was it um, called? Let's see if I can find it's it. It's called Retrowave Outrun. Is hmm. the name of the yeah. playlist. I hope it doesn't start playing. But yeah, if you look on Spotify, that's the name of the. Uh, let me see if you can search for it. I but, might uh, already have this playlist. Pl- playlist like, subscribed somewhere. Yeah, Retro Wave Outrun. 
it's yeah. a it's a playlist it's a uh, it's really good mm-hmm. it's got um, a few it's got a few video game ones in there too like they do a synth wave version of the lost woods from ocarina of time oh nice uh, hmm. neat so um there's one that i like uh it's from uh, do you guys know who dr disrespect is uh i think so he's a streamer and um he has like yes. a very like synth wavy yeah. aesthetic mm-hmm. so if you find his playlist uh, somebody uh, grabs all the songs that they use from the YouTube videos and oh, just cool. throws them in there. And That's it's a really cool. solid. Yeah, it's nice. like 500 songs. So. And cool. it, is that when you're working or just in general? Or do you have like, do you go back and forth? Uh, yeah, I mostly just listen to that uh, whenever I'm doing anything. But when I'm reading, I usually try to put stuff like that more ambient rather than like. Yeah, beat like a based. chill hop or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Chill hop is good for writing and studying, you know. Like the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the the chill hop variations? People have been the, like fan art. Mm-hmm. People have been doing like you know the the chill hop girl that's studying that the mm-hmm. classic one. People have been doing like their own versions in different cities across the world. That's nice. funny. Yeah, I saw someone do an actual like photograph of them doing that. You know, sitting in the exact same composition and stuff is neat with the, nice. the cats on the windowsill you know? yeah 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 i tried making a cyberpunk version of that it okay. was just like this lady and she's kind of like in weird um like sci-fi environments mm-hmm. and i just put music on it and the image is like frozen but like things in the background are animated mm-hmm. oh that's cool uh, so like you have uh, uh like holograms kind of flickering um and she's kind of like floating in the air and in, i don't know i think that was like my way of trying to do, you know, like a chill, what, what, what do they call it? Lo-fi, whatever. Lo-fi, chill mm-hmm. hop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Now, what about TV show? All right, Kevin. Okay. It's your time to show. Oh, Kevin's probably on vacation. He's probably not watching today. It's a holiday. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Stargate SG-1. Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I try to, like, think of something that was a little bit more recent. Um, but, yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, Stargate. I, I can still rewatch all the episodes, and they—I don't know—they still hold up. So, yeah. How about the movie. I was—I was never a Stargate, never a Stargate fan. My dad really liked Stargate, but I wasn't—I just—I—I I don't know. I, I never got into it. Mm. I'm yeah, sure I, if I sat down and watched it, I'd be—I'd I'd be into it, you know. Because yeah. you know, I enjoy myself some good sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it takes a little bit to kind of get used to the um, like the cheesiness of. Richard mm-hmm. Dean Anderson's jokes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're always so dry, and they're kind of like, what the hell? Is this supposed to be funny? But eventually, it does become funny. Well, <laughs> eventually, the, it becomes funny. <laughs> the, uh, the first movie was okay. The second movie was really bad. Was it? Uh, which movie are you talking about? There was, a, there, was a Stargate, there was a Stargate movie, right? Or am I thinking of something else? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was there's the... Original Stargate, which yeah. um, you had what's his name, um, Kurt Russell. Yeah. Mm. And then you have like these ones that were based on the TV show rather than the movie, and mm. those ones mm. wrapped up the the series. Um, so like at the end, uh, at the end of the series, it ends on a cliffhanger, and so they use the movie to wrap it up. Interesting. Wasn't there? Interesting. Yeah, I thought, I thought there was a part. Yeah, Stargate Two. And it was like really bad before even the TV show, I think. Mm. Unless I'm thinking of something else, but I think that's. Yeah, I can't remember. I was trying to look it up, but man, those graphics back then, woo, man. That's funny. You look back on that stuff. That the graphics back then are not even as good as real time video games are now. Mm-hmm. So, man. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like those um, Beast Wars uh, Transformer ones. Yeah. Those things were yeah. like a million dollars an episode. Yeah. Uh, like they literally like total crash. But... <laughs> now, what about podcasts? What do you listen to in podcasts? If you listen to podcasts. Yeah, I'm not too big on podcasts, but there are three that I do like. Um, uh, the main one that I do listen to is called Dear Hank and John. Um, mm-hmm. It has the Green Brothers. Uh, I also like Lore, which is about folklore. Mm-hmm. And then... There's this one. Uh, it's kind of an offshoot of 99% Invisible. It's called uh, Articles of Interest, and it's about clothing and like the history behind it. Cool. Uh, they have one about punk, which uh, is kind of like what Ooh. drew me in. 
Yeah. You yeah. into punk rock? Uh, I like. I think I like certain bands. Uh, like I like okay. Misfits and stuff like that. But okay. I would never call myself like a punk rock listener person. I just I have like very specific uh, bands that I do like, and that's because I think I got into them in a very uh, developmental part of my life, and okay. so I never really explored beyond it. You know. Mm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And now plug in. Mm. Uh, I do think that X Particles is probably like the best plugin, but I also like uh, Motion, uh, Motion, and also what's that other one where you can save your curves. Um, what's it called again? What is for that? After Effects. You can uh, save your curves. Yeah, so you can like create like curves and then save them, and then Ooh. you can just uh, hmm. copy and paste them all. Let me see. That's cool. Oh, we didn't talk about the new Rocket Lasso plugin, did we? We did not. No, we're going to try and have uh, Chris come at least on the show for like a, a at least for a, a small spot appearance or something mm-hmm. to talk about it a little bit. But um, Oats. yeah, this recall plugin is really cool. You got to check that. Yeah, out. it is. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, how much is it? Like 120 or something? Um, I, don't, I don't know I don't the know exact price. We were on the beta of it and uh, I just think it's great. Yeah. I think it's really great. Um, so I'd love to talk to him more in depth about it and how it was developed and everything else because it's incredibly useful. Mm-hmm. And pe- yeah, people just from were, seeing the demo. Yeah, and people were like comparing it. I guess there was something EJ had a while back that was yeah, similar. Yeah, it's 109. It's 109. 109. Yeah. 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 It's worth um, it. Yeah, I'll it's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's something that EJ has, and EJ even got in our chat to talk about it, and he's like, EJ's thing was nowhere near as complex and it hasn't been updated since R17. So yeah. it could be broken. Yeah. You know, I'm sure it is. Yeah. It's cool though. Very cool. Uh, so the plugin is called Flow. 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 That sounds For familiar. After Effects? Yes. Man. What does it do? Flow, A scripts. Yeah, you Let's can, you just um, copy and paste your curves or like yeah. save curves. Oh, oh the Man, curve that's thing. That's right. Cool. That's super cool. Hmm. I would uh, I, I pretty much just save all the curves that I need, uh-huh. and then I just whip them out, just uh, select it, and then select the two keyframes that I want them to have that curve, and then uh-huh. just hit apply, and you're good to go. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah, we should get a copy of that. Oh. Well, it was a collaboration between Zach Lovett and Render Tom. Okay. I know Zach Lovett. He's in our Slack. Thanks. Oh, yeah. And it, it comes with a, a bunch of presets too, right? Yeah. Uh, nice. Ryan Summers made some as well. Oh, yeah? Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. That's All awesome. Right. Let's okay. Get on that. Let's get us caught. Yeah, totally. All right. Headphones. Uh, the ones that I'm wearing. That's the Bose Wireless uh, Comfort 2, whatever. Nice. Mm-hmm. Is that what you got too? Always, just always about, yeah. Bose. Why Comfort Thirty Five? Mm-hmm. Nice. Just waiting for someone who works for Bose to uh, <laughs> right? to send us some free free headphones. I think maybe we're gonna have to contact them. Yeah, I, I think, think we might be able yeah. to. Yeah, it's like, yeah. hey, we do a podcast where we talk about your headphones all the time. You know, <laughs> I don't wear them on the show though. I don't wear. <laughs> But Dave it, doesn't wear them on the show, but I do. It's funny. Please the, give us some free headphones. The reason I don't wear them is because they're too good. <laughs> it really is. I can't hear what's going around on around me and like other things because they're so good at canceling the noise. So, yeah, yeah, I wear them when I'm working, like constantly. I I do all my phone calls with them. Yeah, mm. they're great nice. for that. Yeah, uh, I like them for right. the uh, flight uh, part of it. Oh, uh, yeah, when... I don't. Man, I, I get I get such a migraine on flights. I'm mm. I'm interested to see how it goes this this. This Thursday or whatever when I fly. Uh, I haven't flown in almost a year. You're going to have to it's report insane. back on that. I know. I know. I, like, I I'm, haven't I'm, done like less than 20 flights or even maybe even 30 flights in a year in yeah, like 15 years. So It's insane. Like I have a, I have a Southwest credit card. You know, it's like there's no point in using it right now. You know, it's not like I need the points because I'm going to go yeah. fly somewhere. You know, yeah. so I'm putting everything on my Amazon card. Plus, we got all those <laughs> credits right now on our on our different uh, flights. Do we? Yeah, because we had to cancel so many flights when COVID happened. 
So we That's have credits funny. just sitting there for every everybody. Oh. I can't All wait right. to have a DFW C40 again. That was going to be the I know. Most epic, epic, epic event. and It's going to be fun. Oh, man. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> the next one, we the next one is your favorite app. What is your favorite app? Um, I've been using Trello a lot lately. And, okay. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not very good at like time management and mm -hmm. like prioritizing what's important. So using that has been like really uh, useful for me because I can just like look at what I need to do. Yeah. Just kind of stack them and then as I finish, just you know throw them into like the finish pile. And I don't know. I kind of also kind of feels like a game. You're like, oh no, I can once I finish this, it like gets yeah. uh, removed and yeah. Can... It is fun to gamify it. Trello's mm -hmm. okay. I like I I worked for a company where they use Trello and it's like I don't know. I for me personally, I've never found a good project management stuff, you know? Never. I've never found one that I like. You know, I but I'm I'm so I'm so visually like if there's too much going on on one screen, like especially with Trello, how you've got like so and so comment mm -hmm. and so and so comment so you know, and Basecamp is the worst for me. I my mind instantly goes. I have no idea what's going on. I can't focus on one individual thing. You know. And that's why I like Todoist, and I, I don't even yeah. use all the features of Todoist. Mm -hmm. I use it's like here's the things in the inbox. Half the time I finish them before they're even out of the inbox. And I like the comments thing because if there's like links and other things like that that I need to put from my computer to my phone or my phone mm -hmm. to my computer. Oh, I need to send Matt that thing. Well, I have it. I need to text it to him, but it's on my computer. I'll yeah. just put it in the comment, and then I'll I'll just copy and paste it from the phone. Yeah. Um, but it gamifies it too. It gives you points and things for how many you finish <laughs> and all of that. You know. So I don't care about tests. the gamifying thing. Honestly, yeah. all I do is I have a, I have a sticky, like you know, stickies on uh, either the Mac or the PC. I have a stickies open that says current jobs out to freelancers potential jobs hmm. and then yeah. here's the tutorials here's my board list like if i'm bored i can do one of those things nice. you know <laughs> so that's it i had a joke yeah. there but never mind <laughs> mm. <laughs> um all right last one this is this is the difficult one is your favorite life hack mm. uh yeah so i would just say are you guys familiar with marie kondo Yes. Yeah. The, does it bring uh, you joy? This brings joy. Yes. This yeah. does not. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that her um, tips for folding clothes is probably like the the thing that I found the most useful. Huh. Okay. Is everything's in thirds, and instead of like stacking your clothes like this, you stack them like this, so they're standing. And then if you mm -hmm. fold it a certain way, your shirt can like the graphic can be on the outside, and so you oh. know exactly where uh. what you're gonna like pull out. So if you have a lot of like huh. great shirts and you want to know which one's the one that says Cinema 4D on it, just fold it yeah. in that way and now you know. Oh, maybe I I'll just try hang that. up all my shirts, mm. even oh, all do? my t-shirts. Your t-shirts? Yeah, I hang up have? all my t-shirts. Huh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, why not? I'll put them in the drawer. See, I need to do that in my new drawers. I haven't organized everything yet. They're all, they're folded, but they're in bags. So like I'll take them out and maybe do it that way. Hmm. Give it a try. Yeah. Does she, is it, yeah. can you find that online somewhere on how to do it? Like a YouTube yeah, video? Yeah, if you, if you look up like Marie Kondo folding shirts, um, there's something on YouTube where she shows you like the technique. Super simple. It's kind of what they do in um, in like our places where they sell clothes. Wow. And so whenever you see them kind of like stacked a certain way, like they're using that same technique as hers. All right. I'm going to check that out. I might do that. Revolutionize my t-shirt selection brings process. happiness. This does not. <laughs> Of course, half the time I just wear a black T-shirt anyway, so. Right. Yeah. No, I just just hang them up. You got a big enough closet, I would I would mm. assume, for just T-shirts. All it takes is one row, one small row. You know, I've, I've only got like space now. I twenty-five T-shirts that I wear. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I can't use the closet. Uh, we I have to share it. So. Uh -huh. uh, if I just put all my clothes up, it's going to take up the whole closet. So. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I put, just put my jeans yeah, gonna... up. I put my jeans and my shorts, mm. my, and my undies and my and socks in the drawers. My jorts. <laughs> jorts. 
Yeah, with the uh, the buttons that can make them into jeans, you know, oh, you can rip. unzip and they, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the unzip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've been wearing the same pair of um, black, uh, like, jogging shorts for the last six months at this point. Yeah. Gross. Not like that. It's not like I don't wash them. <laughs> I just like I just don't wear anything like I I, I don't remember the, I've worn jeans probably one time this year. Uh huh. I don't even know where my jeans are. Maybe they got yeah. lost in the move. Remember uh, you guys remember jeans? I don't hang up my undies. I don't hang remember up my jeans? undies. I put them in the drawer. Yeah, I wear. Remember? I I'm wearing shorts today, but like I wear uh I, I wear jeans most of the time. I never wear them anymore. See, you don't like you get comfortable for work. I actually like. Yeah, dude. You gotta I, be comfortable I can't. To be I can't creative. wear pajama bottoms. Like, you know, I just can't. And I have to be wearing shoes at all times. Well, you can't like, wear pajama bottoms when it's hot. That's why you need shorts. But then you go with the yeah, yoga pants. Yeah, but it's never hot in my fall. house. It's always like seventy degrees in my house. Yeah, man. Bust out the yoga pants with juicy on mm -hmm. the back. <laughs> juicy. <laughs> it's your PSL. Yeah. 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 October, man. I got my pumpkin spice <sighs> candle right here already. It's already going. Right. Bath and Body right. Works, twenty five bucks. Mm. Mm -hmm. How many um, pumpkin spice uh, lattes have you guys had? Zero. Not, not any yet. I usually wait till my birthday to have my first PSL. Mm. I don't. I don't drink coffee, but the uh, our babysitter does. So I bought a Keurig machine, nice. and it kept on popping my uh, my circuit breaker on my uh, on my house. So I had to. Because apparently they installed a bunch of like crappy GFCI circuit breakers, and so like I had to take uh, it out, put in a new one, pop it in. Some GTFO you know? circuit breakers. Right. <laughs> GTFO. Yeah. I need more of those. Scott's yeah. in the chat. What's up, Scott? I heard What's you up, had Scott? a heard you had a rock and barbecue. Yeah, I know. <laughs> did, yeah. I, I need to hang out next week. <laughs> Matt missed you. If you're, yeah, don't worry about me. I ain't got that COVID. I, I, I. I, I oh I don't know if I mentioned this on the show but um I'm exactly five months from when I had COVID mm -hmm. and I still have antibodies, which is crazy. Mm. Wow. Still have antibodies. Yeah. Crazy. Mm. Mm. I'm I'm curious if it's like because I don't uh I I don't do the things that they recommend you do like you know use hand sanitizer and not touch your face, you know oh. and because I I anytime I go out. It, I just wear the mask. I'll wear a mask, you know, but I'm not very safe. So I'm wondering if I'm getting a constant influx of COVID so much that my body is still having to produce antibodies. You know what I'm saying? That's a thing. It's kind of like when, when, uh, when Dwight was saying, you know, everyone should cough in his face oh, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know? I don't know. <laughs> Lucky doctors <laughs> love him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I, I go to the gas station. I, man you type in my pin code on something i i use yeah. like the knuckle on my pinky and then i have hand sanitizer on my keychain yeah no, see i'm not worried no. about it it's it's one of the uh -huh. nice things about having had it you know yeah i there's so little worry now but my my question still and i haven't gotten a good answer to this is can you is, come can you get it again can, no can you come hang over hang out with me and play a game of pool on my so. new pool table and if you i think i can have it but you have the antibodies. Can you pass it to me? If you've been I don't exposed think, again, I think your body will ramp up and kill the antibodies before you can I could it. spread it to you. Okay. Now, if it's on my hands and stuff like that, or you know, like I could, pro I yeah. could probably pass it to you that way. You know, right. I don't know. Yeah, just take so a shower just... before you come over. This. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, you do need to come over. <laughs> I do. The new place. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, I know. So word all right well we got to get out of here uh yeah gotta eat some lunch i gotta go do my <laughs> half marathon here so i gotta mentally prepare <laughs> hydrate all that fun stuff carb up here, no go get some, some, that's a bad some idea alfredo right no, that's a bad <laughs> idea if you haven't been eating carbs and then you eat carbs before you do the final uh -huh. run that's probably gonna mess uh -huh. with you i do have yeah. those packets of of gel have you seen those terrible thick gross packets of gel i mean they've got no. flavors you carry them in your little bag or pouch or whatever <laughs> and and then when you're like you know certain points in the race you it has electrolytes it has um 
you know, like uh, uh, sodium and stuff to help absorb mm -hmm. water and things like that. And they have different flavors, and it's so thick. They're little itty bitty packets, but you like rip them open and you eat them while you're running, mm -hmm. and and it really helps re-energize you, like at the forty-five hour or hour mark, something like that. Ah, oh, interesting. Uh, the only problem is it's so thick; it makes you more thirsty when you. So you're running and you're like, oh, oh god, and you're like trying to down some water and not stop running. Yeah. It's How are you pretty. again? One more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, um, <laughs> do, you, do you do you ever get like like tummy rumbles? You know, when you're running and stuff like that. Because I don't, you know, I, mm -hmm. I have stomach troubles all the time, and not, I I feel like if I really. if I went and ran a marathon, I you know I'd be like that that dude who just like Poops. pooped himself and yeah. ran for like, no, you just <laughs> ran for the, the whole before you go. I mean, that's. And, and the fact that I eat one meal a day, nothing's in my stomach already. Yeah, but I get true. a stitch that's when I true. eat before I run anyway, so I just I don't like to eat before I run. So mm. um, you just you drink a lot of water, Gatorade. Yeah. Uh, sort of switch yeah. back and forth if you have two bottles. And um, Mountain, Mountain Dew Zero is okay, right? Oh. I could just drink like a couple of those and be all right. <laughs> Actually, honestly, I do have a little bit of caffeine before I go. And, and yeah. I've read up on it, and a lot of people swear by it. And some people just take a caffeine pill, but... I think I drink mm -hmm. enough caffeine as it is to, yeah, to, to help. But I do have maybe like a quarter of a uh, diet coke or something before I go. Or coke <laughs> okay. Zero. I was gonna say you have like a giant cup of coffee before you start running. <laughs> no, you don't want you don't want a lot of carbonation. That'll hurt. Yeah. So you got to keep it light. Yeah. You know, but it it <clears throat> does seem to help me a little bit. I picked so. up some uh, Topo Chico. Topo nice. Chico. Topo Chico. Um, <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> The it's got a the hint of uh, uh, what is it the uh, oh, the what's the what's the grapefruit it's got a, a hint of grapefruit so mm. it's like the uh, yeah what's the one uh, Lacroix that you love with the, oh, the it's grapefruit like mousse but I Pomple love grapefruit mousse, right. um, Perrier it's actually really good <laughs> right yeah. it's it's interesting it's like the the I don't like flavored bubbly water but this is actually pretty good because it's not there's not so many bubbles on my tongue you know lucky says just chug yeah. some monster beforehand oh God. yeah yeah i have noticed <laughs> and i don't know if this is just a fluke or what but if i have had a monster energy drink like maybe two or three hours before i run i mm -hmm. do feel like i do a little bit better mm -hmm. might be a coincidence I think, it's just a fluke. I think it's a fluke yeah could be the taurine or whatever other chemicals. Yeah, are maybe in it's taurine. What other <laughs> cancer-causing chemicals are in it? But you never know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any um, things it's that you do to keep you? It's actually four loco that you've been drinking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Do I have any Go what? Ahead, Louis. Oh, sorry. Uh, do you do anything to kind of keep you motivated while you're running? It, the music, man. I tried mm -hmm. one time to listen to podcasts while I run, and I'm like, nope, nope. Got to have the music yeah. and and the um. The Spotify playlist that I have, especially for the long runs, it's a very slow climb, but I have music that, um, I think I mentioned this on the show once before, but there's a website you can go to where you can get uh, certain BPMs. You can type in the BPM and find songs that are in those BPMs. It's a Spotify playlist that just increases one BPM every song and just kind of builds mm -hmm. its way up, builds its way up. That's kind of neat. Just to kind of keep your, your motivation. <laughs> and I kind of have learned you know, where to start and where not to start. I'm starting very low today. I'm almost going to be walking at the beginning just to really start yeah. getting into it. And and if it's too slow, if the song is too slow, I just let my body go at whatever pace feels comfortable until I hit a song that matches that pace. And then I continue on with the BPMs. So oh, thanks. Um, the music will definitely do it. You, you know, you have those power songs and whatnot. Yeah. And, uh, I've got some good ones. There's a Jay Z song uh, where he's talking about I'm already home, and uh, <laughs> that one is usually at the end when I'm almost home. I time it all out. Mm -hmm. Like I look at all mm -hmm. yeah. everything. I'm like, oh, I know I'm going to be here at this point, and all how of that. Have so, you, how far have you run so far? You started to couch to 5K. How long have you gone? Is this is how like far? what? Is this, this is 13 and a half kilometers. 13.2 kilometers. Be, yeah, this will be 13 point something. I've gone 11, I think 11 and change okay. at one point or something like that. All right. It's really not that much further. 
it's it's not that I, it's not that I haven't been able to do it or haven't wanted to try it. It's that my training program is more about the interval training. So, like for example, right. last week I did um, almost three miles in twenty seven minutes, right? And that's because I was really pushing hard, but I wasn't conserving energy on purpose. You know, mm -hmm. it's more of like the and and I'm stopping and starting the whole time. I'm just going through what the program tells me to do to mm -hmm. you know but when you're doing a long haul like this you you're way you conserve energy way more you start very light you know you yeah. really don't push hard because you can run a, a bpm let's say you're on 150 beats a minute you could run mm -hmm. that far or not far right like you could you could push your stride so that you go very far per step mm -hmm. you know or, or you could run, you could run in place on that, you know, so you pick yeah. how much exertion you want with that. Right. So right, I, right, I don't right, put right. the exertion you. in, in these long runs. This will be a very long run because I'm not going, I'm not going for speed. I'm going for distance. Right. Yeah. Aww. Some people go for distance and for speed. <laughs> right. yeah. But you're all alone. And I'm all in alone. In your time of need. Yeah. <laughs> Go get my trumpet. All right. Right. I guess we should get, get out, out of here. here. Yeah, I'm hungry. I need some food. <laughs> Hello, hungry. <laughs> I'm dead. You can rate us on iTunes. You can leave a review <laughs> on your podcatcher of choice. Helps get our ratings up. You can also subscribe because that helps us get out there in the uh, in the ether and whatnot. You can subscribe to our newsletter. Oh my God, I forgot about our newsletter. There's too much going on. Yeah. But I will get another newsletter out there soon, probably after IBC. So that would be next week. You can say you've been there, done that, got the T-shirt, the MoGraph logo tee, the Paul Bab Feel the Bab 2020 shirt. All the profits from that go to Doctors Without Borders. Well, the we got render a few things... more weeks of that before uh, before uh, before it becomes a classic. Yeah, classic Class classic shirt. Render yeah. things T-shirt hoodie and long sleeve tee. Make sure you get one of those. It's almost PSL time. You can get one of the long sleeve ones. You get comfort, comfortable with that on. And then the That Render is Fire shirt, which you're only allowed to wear, ironically. Yeah. Unless you're Shams. Unless you're Shams. <laughs> Unless you're fire, Shams. bro. Yeah. <laughs> that Render's Fire, bro. Luis, where can people find you on the interwebs if they want to find you? Uh, I'm on Instagram uh, under Luis Miranda 4 d uh, I also have my website, which is uh, luis-miranda.com. And if you want to find me on YouTube, where I post my tutorials, I'm at luismiranda40 on there as well. Cool. Well, we appreciate you being on. Yeah, man. Taking yeah, your, thank your you holiday for inviting. to hang out with us a little bit. I'll now. hopefully see you next week. Yeah. This, yeah. this weekend, I guess. Yeah, a little COVID yeah. party. Yeah, I'm gonna make <laughs> I'm gonna make Aria have a COVID party. <laughs> Everybody just coughs in each other's drink. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate it, man. Uh, make sure everybody uh, tune in next week and uh, come talk to EJ in the chats. Yeah. Be here, spreading his yep. I designy goodness. And, we'll probably uh, be late. <laughs> late. I'm gonna put money oh, on it that we're oh. gonna be late. Oh, it's gonna be a later start. He's gonna have to mow his lawn before we start the show. Right. Right. Go on a mow quick, a lot, mow his a quick lawn forty and mile jog. Run three miles. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was That's looking funny. at his Strava, man. He's like, oh, I don't really run that much. He's going like 40 miles a week or something, you know. Jeez. Oh, it's not much. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to get out of here. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, MoGraph.com. Make sure you ding the bell and whatever the kids are saying now these days. I don't know. I just subscribed. I sus <laughs> Every time the bell rings, <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> oh, man. Let's not That's go down that That's a very interesting situation. situation. All right. <laughs> We're going to get out of here. Until next time, right. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And I'm Luis. Have a good one. Later, yo. <laughs> Stand by. Mary. 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 Mary.